All right, Tobin, where'd you stash the girl? What girl? Well, you want to play games? Play this one. What do you get when you rearrange the letters of your name? Anagrams are fun, especially when it makes our job easier. Wow, look at this. That's your avatar. You're the executioner. What? You execute her, Willis? i never seen that girl before. Your avatar had virtual sex with her hundreds of times in another universe. I never played that game! Sure you did, friend. We have your account info and the credit card records from your membership fee. Somebody must have stolen my card and opened an account in my name. This is a mistake. We'll see who made the mistake when our detectives search your computer. I like it when they make them walk upstairs. That's that's the extent of robot technology <laughs> right now. We built a robot that can walk upstairs. Look at that's pretty fucking impressive. Yeah, a fucking two-year-old. But he's got to do it sideways. That that creepy. Uh, oh, the dog. The dog. One? Yeah, uh, that one's fucked up. Yeah, oh, I just man. said creepy, and you knew what I was talking about. Yeah, because it's uh, like I didn't realize the uncanny valley would apply to just like walking. <laughs> 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 Cybernetics. Like it 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 looks like. A deer getting its legs, and yeah, but it's no, just a like metal a deer box. with no head. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking scary. No, it looks like that something from a vaudeville short where someone tries to sneak into the fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of looks like a marionette, well, like, that's kinda dressed weird. as a, like yeah, a just as a horse, horse with no head. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Marx oh. Brothers, you'll never get into the opera like that. <laughs> uh, that is very silly. No, is that a, a lovely robot conversation? Brings us into talk rather. What number is this? One oh four. Sure. 104. Sure. Let's let's or kill. Is it 103? No, 103 was last week. The one I wasn't in. You weren't. Oh, you appeared anyway. Yes. For, you appeared for anyway. For one blazing moment. But you know, okay. See, I got. I'm Chris Antista. I'm Michael Raparis. I'm Tyler Nagata. And I'm Tyler Wilde. What we what we have here, in addition to a podcast filled with a top seven about <laughs> historical figures, and. Uh, uh, another Split Reason contest from SplitReason.com where sound effects, a community segment, and game deals coming up. We have a podcast first. I... Jesus. Uh, we have two Tylers occupying the same I think, show. I think it definitely is because the the like time way back when Tyler was on, I was recording the T documentary. Oh, yeah. And so I stepped oh. off the mic while he got on. Uh, so I don't think we've ever been on mic together. This has been a this is a momentous occasion. It really is. Yeah. It really Tyler is. and Tyler. <laughs> Tyler and I got our rising podcast celebrity because you guys also have what on the side? Pokemon Monday. Pokemon Mondays. Oh, yeah. I it's don't know what day that comes Pokemon. out. <laughs> Pokemon. Uh, mon- every Monday is going to be every Monday. Every Monday, mm-hmm. and people are loving it so far. Um, yeah, we're really happy with the feedback. Uh, thanks for all the comments. Oh, I love the, all these new podcasts coming. They're the new way. Yeah. They died for a little while, and now I believe in them again. I do. I do. They're different than an article. You can't copy and paste a podcast. You cannot. Wikipedia cannot help you with your stupid <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I believe in podcasts. That's right. Fledgling game sites. Take that. But it's also part of my master plan to do nothing but podcasts. And part of that was spinning stuff off. Uh, CB Radio, that'll happen eventually. That's Charlie's own show where it's just him and jazz music. <laughs> where he talks about point and click games. But I also Huge wanted... Gabriel Knight soundboard. I wanted uh, TNT Radio. Tyler and Tyler mm. sit here and talk about TNT. PC games. Mm. TNT, do I have a do I have a theme? And life as Dude, a guy named what? Tyler. There do couldn't be anything with TNT in it that you could use for an intro to TNT. <laughs> no <Radio>? way, <laughs> that's impossible. Uh, get away from the van. Yeah! I'm pumped. I'm dying now, mate! Come on, Tyler. You want a piece of me? Whoa! Whoa, man! Oh, no. nice. I pierce, I scratch, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that 
That's awesome. Yeah. Was that from the Pokey the Pokey cast? Yes. Oh no no that was from that the... was from uh uh what was that when song you were, called? You Dota guys... Paquette. Yeah. yeah. Dota Paquette. <laughs> I fear I scratch. Sorry. <laughs> and I I actually had to make this because Chris was busy. So yes, I made my own intro. I was busy I... making what may be the worst, most hastily. I, I was gone and I I couldn't get back in the swing of games. I got back and see all this news. Like I don't know what these things right, are. You yeah, were off in the yeah. uh, the Midwest. Midwest at a couple of weddings. We may talk about that later. I don't know how much we have to, t- to talk about. So this is this is a podcast of trying things out. Yeah. Part of trying things out means new sound effects. Oh. And trying out old sound effects. What a terrible segue. Uh, yeah. That doesn't I've, make any sense. We also have live from the tarmac of O'Hare Airport, uh, Brett Elston. As Brett bot. Hey, okay, this is fun. Yeah, yeah, oh, we're bringing Brett back fun. in. Oh, mm. man. Oh, man. Brett, what are you doing? That research me, look on box back. <laughs> Brett can do anything. That's in an airport, yeah. even. Wow. Yeah. Cool, That's... bowling. Brett. Oh. Oh. Brett. oh, you can't bowl in an airplane, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> stupid. <laughs> oh, stupid, man. stupid Brett. He's not here to defend himself. Hey, I like Brett. <laughs> no, I don't like Brett. <laughs> hey, you're the minority, buddy. <laughs> I... Oh, well. That's our boss now. That means we have to bitch about it. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> okay, what do we... Oh, okay, see, we're trying out new uh, stupid sounds. I, well, I tried. I tried to make a new sound out of an unfinished remix not done by me. And you'll now hear my unfinished remix of another unfinished remix. This is weird. Cool, this is like wow. the director's cut Are of the like sound effect. you like Beethoven? This is really weird. But every week we talk about a top seven, and we will do so now with this feature intro. And now, our feature presentation. Yeah! Somebody remix all the Disney intros, or the Disney home video intros. Apparently this could, be, this could appear appeal only to me. <laughs> I'm nodding my head for some reason. Yeah, well, what's our top seven this it's week? It is the top seven historical figures defamed by games. Defame. This is a fantastic Michael Rapares article. Thank you. Because I know you're kind of a history buff. It's the only kind I know how to write. Yeah, Michael <laughs> actually did research for this article. Yeah, and not looking on Boxback. <laughs> <laughs> well, how would have Brett done it? That research me look on See, Boxback. See, okay. <laughs> already exhausting. <laughs> it was already a flimsy. Uh, uh, yes. But you're already kind of a history buff. A little bit. You like journalism. I do. Mm-hmm. So this is one of those rare feats of yeah. historical yeah. facts yeah. and journalism on yeah. Games Radar. That is also about video games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Are what there any ones who you wanted to make the cut but didn't? Uh, it was actually harder finding ones to put in there. Uh, somebody, somebody in the comments suggested we put in Rasputin because mm-hmm. he was in Shadow Hearts, and I think it's kind of difficult to say that a historical figure yeah. who's genuinely villainous was kind of defamed, although... Mm, yeah. Not, I mean, not only was he genuinely villainous, he was actually like a supervillain somehow. Uh, I mean, it, it, you know, if you if you listen to Anastasia and all the other things, <laughs> he was he, he was well, a fraud who... He was like Nancy Reagan's astrologer, <laughs> but... <laughs> But uh, you know, he's a guy he who's larger than life family. at this point. He's he's yeah. a mythical figure, practically. Yeah, well, mainly his, his biggest achievement was uh, being really, really hard to kill. Right, mm-hmm. and that they, I think, they shot him, uh, beheaded him, shot him with a cannon, drowned him, stabbed him, poisoned him with cake. Uh, some still, of those may have been made up, <laughs> and he still won the election later. Apparently, then. the yeah. cake was, it was amazing. Huh. <laughs> Brass, brass boots. He's, he's running alongside the Sarah Shadow Palin. Hearts. If he's deep. He's sort of ripped out of his historical place and time in a game like Shadow Hearts. Is he? I mean, I don't, that takes that... place in like the 1900s. I mean, I'm going to move on because I don't know yeah. shit about Shadow Hearts. Neither do I. <laughs> uh, um, what was number... Yeah. What was, what ha- was... Having said all that about uh, villains, mm-hmm. number seven, seven. Yeah. is Oda Nobunaga, one of the most villainous figures in Japanese history. Uh, and also one of its most heroic. It really depends on who's telling the story. Yeah, I was going to say, does does his legacy differ in Japan, or is there sort of like a the, the an Japanese accurate historical account? Seem to have a complicated view of him, and that he's either portrayed as extremely villainous, or mm-hmm. he's portrayed as like this noble guy who you know just ha- has is a little bit idealistic and wants to unify Japan. And yeah, he's ruthless, but mm-hmm. he respects his enemies. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. You know, like I said, it all depends on like you know whether you're watching a Kurosawa movie with him mm. or playing a video game where he's the villain, like in Onimusha, where he's mm. actually demonic. 
and has <laughs> made a pact demonic. with demons who may or may not be stand-ins for Europeans who Nobunaga actually did make various alliances with that uh, helped him almost conquer Japan before he was killed by one of his generals. Yeah, that it, was an awfully dense sentence. I, <laughs> <laughs> you, well, well, that was a dense, dense, dense. There you go. There you go. Yeah, you go. Dense, dense revolution. <laughs> Um, and but you made it. I thought I remembered you saying in there that he wanted to whip like overarching militaristic rule over Japan. Yes. But in order to quell all these minor wars over stupid shit. Yeah, I'm not sure that that was his primary goal. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there there were just like I mean, this is called the Sengoku or Warring mm-hmm. States period, where it was mm-hmm. just like all these little petty feudal warlords who were constantly attacking one another and forming alliances and breaking uh, them. Mm-hmm. And it was just ridiculous civil war. What you're saying, though, is that he didn't necessarily have a glowing red gem embedded in his chest. <laughs> no. And, and a cape of fire. That's probably <laughs> inaccurate, yes. Yeah, Some probably. liberties were taken right, there. Yeah. Rarely did you have to stab his claw for massive damage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, but, yeah. And then, you know, you, you've got a game like the first game he ever appeared in was Nobunaga's Ambition, where I, which I think mm-hmm. was a pretty neutral portrayal because you are an Nobunaga mm-hmm. in that game, or at least he was one of the characters you could play as. So you're just trying to conquer Japan. Yeah, basically. Essentially. It's, I saw that it's a strategy, like a, a strategy game on the cover. Yeah, yeah. I remember always giving the peasants gold and rice. You played that thing? <laughs> Heck yeah! Oh my I god, I've never uh, even seen it before. Oh. The, that, the screenshots always scared me off. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I have to manage rice... I'm eight. Turn-based <laughs> strategy at its finest. I love the animation of the rice farmers farming rice. I can't even eat rice with chopsticks. <laughs> All right, easy, Seinfeld. <laughs> oh, and, and he's also in what? Is he in Dynasty Warriors or Samurai? Yeah, Samurai Warriors and probably Warriors Orochi, whatever the, the crossover series were. Yes, number one uh, last he was, week's top He was in Devil Kings, a.k.a. Sengoku oh, yeah. Basara, which I think we're getting another one of now. All right, all right. I'm going to move on to number six because yeah, okay. my head is... My number head is six. Number six. Fine. Number six. <laughs> Wait, uh, who's this fellow? Girolamo Savonarola. Savonarola. Yeah. I believe I have a clip from Ezio talking about him from the uh-huh. Bonfire of the Vanities DLC trailer. Yes. There was a third man. He took the apple. Ooh. Oh. He wore a black robe like a monk. And I think... Finger. I have to go right away. Yerom, I have to go. Oh. This is, so who is this, who is this guy? This guy is uh, <laughs> a Franciscan monk uh-huh. uh, who was around during the Renaissance and who basically rose to power in Florence, Italy. Basically, uh, controlled the city for a few years and. He was an interesting guy because he, he was just like this fire and brimstone preacher mm-hmm. and uh, had these things called Bonfires of the Vanities where he would basically send boys to go around door to door and uh, collect various vanity items from uh, people at like, you know, gaming tables, mirrors, mm-hmm. just basically anything that was frivolous or a symbol of wealth. And then they would, you know, publicly burn them on bonfires. Which sounds <laughs> awesome. The Pope's no. hat. But, the Pope's you know, he, hat. <laughs> he, was, he was very much against corruption and that, you know, the idea that people should be treated differently based on their wealth. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was also a very vocal opponent of uh, Rodrigo Borgia, who's mm-hmm. in the game and is better known as Pope Alexander VI and is remembered as one of the most corrupt popes in history. Because he was vocal in publicly criticizing Borgia, he was banned from preaching, uh, and when he didn't stop preaching, he was excommunicated. And when he still didn't stop preaching, he was eventually uh, arrested by the church and tried for heresy and forced to sign a confession under torture and then burned at the stake. Wow. And the game has him seizing control of Florence from the ruling Medici family, who were actually kicked out uh, when... Charles VIII of France, or seventh, whatever, uh, invaded. And he, you know, basically tries to bring all the citizens under his control by starving them out, by controlling all the resources. And then an, an angry mob uh, t- tries to burn him to the stake at the end, which, you know, is favored method of execution for angry mobs. Yeah, I had, had... Looking for a black robed monk who's missing a finger. <laughs> Do you mean, like, Fra Savonarola? Then it's true. Savonarola has taken control of Firenze. Oh, yep. It sounds like a lot less fact than the Assassin's Creed 2 main game. 
Yeah, a little bit. Well, I mean, Assassin's Creed 2 main game has plenty of uh, deviations from fact. Which yeah, but not. it doesn't seem like out, they didn't outright shame, alter, like completely flip the person's role. That's true. But, I mean, you know, he, he did take control of Florence. Mm-hmm. It's just the methods are different. Uh, he he was and who he ridiculously was, strict, but I mean he didn't. And who he was aligned with was yeah pretty much different. Well, I, d- I don't think he's actually aligned with the Pope in this. He's just kind of like a rogue crazy who manages to luck oh. across the apple of Eden and uses it to mm. control the city, which makes him perfect for DLC, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, if he sure had played does. Nobunaga's ambition, he would know that controlling you control the <laughs> yeah. people with rice and gold. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> You don't starve them and hoard the resources. You've been told. Be well, possibly <laughs> golden rice. <laughs> <laughs> Makes their happiness stat go up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't have unrest. You can't right. have unrest uh, when rice is about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and number five is General Custer, and I didn't really write much. <laughs> you don't this have is kind to. of a gag entry. Yes, you don't have to because I, I, I just dug into old top sevens. Here's the Custer's Revenge music. That is some beautiful shit. Beautiful, beautiful shit. You pull a r- off success. Um, <clears throat> you pull a what? Um, an underhanded act of forced sex uh-huh. off on a uh, roped Indian successfully. This is what it sounded like in the 80s. Blaring at your television. For I'm your angry. <laughs> 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 and then somebody, after wow. we did that, I forgot, I forget who did it, but they just auto tuned my burp to the uh, <laughs> successful Custer's Revenge noise. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. I don't know how to that do that. That is your legacy. But I know. <laughs> so, so far as I know, there is no historical record of Custer actually raping an Indian woman tied to a cactus. That you know of. That I know of. Ah, <laughs> room. Nah. Shadow I, didn't, I didn't bother to do much research on that one. <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, I'm there's sorry. also no historical record of Jesus not being Luke Skywalker. Yeah, Michael, mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of Therefore. antiquated images of Custer doing this. So. <laughs> oh, well. Especially on our site. <laughs> Mostly uh, unerotic postcards yes. and things like that. <laughs> antiquated in the sense that they're made of tan colored Saloon pixels. bathroom walls. <laughs> Silent movies made by Thomas Edison. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we'll get to him. Oh, we yes. will totally get to him. Which number spoilers. Four. Number four. Number four, a little bit of a reach, but I. I was originally going to do the uh, the Heike or Heishi clan from the mm-hmm. uh, Genji games, and that turned out to be a lot of work on a short deadline. And so I lucked into this guy instead, who's uh, Decius Brutus from mm-hmm. Shadow of Rome, who was actually uh, Decimus Junius Brutus Albinus, who was one of the co-conspirators who murdered Caesar. The difference is... That in real life, uh, I mean, it was a public killing, mm-hmm. and the killers were granted amnesty by the Senate the next day, and then he spent the rest of his life fleeing from Mark Antony, and in the game, he was the primary killer, and then uh, murdered all of his co-conspirators in order to keep it a secret, and then pinned the blame for the crime on uh, the father of the hero, Agrippa. The uh, that was him from the game. Yeah, yeah. And then at one point kills Agrippa's mother in front of him. Oh my just, goodness. Just to be a bastard. And he waits until like Agrippa unties her from this post she's tied to and like holds her in his arms. And then all of a sudden she's like, oh, and there's a sword sticking out of her back that he threw because he's a bastard. This, this is and a also me- it looks like there's kind of a lion hanging <laughs> drunkenly off his like shoulders. He- <laughs> I couldn't think of how to say it. He's unfl- It looked like he was being unflinchingly attacked by a lion, <laughs> biting his neck yeah, and his just, paw around him. But he's it, so tough, he just does not. It definitely give a looks shit. more like he rescued a lion from drowning. Yeah, and <laughs> but it's part of his cloak. This is a weird fucking game. Ah, I, I just weird. took this clip from the cutscene. How could you abandon Caesar? <laughs> 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 And he comes at him with, like, these fucking claw grips. He, yeah. he has the weapons of a Mega Man villain. Right. Uh, just very, so it's very it's a very strange game. It takes a lot of liberties <laughs> with what we know of Rome. Yeah, I mean, uh, from what I've read about... Uh, it's basically just, a ripoff of Gladiator. It is. It's, yeah. It's post-Gladiator, and it's just like, well, we need a game set here. Take any liberty you want. When mm-hmm. It's sort of like anybody with an interest in this setting probably yeah. has a 
Look, so long as you can hack off account. limbs and then use yeah. those limbs to club their original owners, <laughs> <laughs> do whatever no, I mean, you want. I love, I love Roman yourself. history, <laughs> and at least you know, in some of the history I've read and the miniseries yeah. Rome, which takes a lot of liberties, I'll say, but uh, he's portrayed kind of as a meek guy. I mean, he was a general, but he wasn't... Well, he wasn't like as aggressive as as he's portrayed. Sometimes he didn't. Nec- he he was conflicted about killing Caesar. Oh well, it, that that's the other thing. He's not the Brutus, even though uh, the yeah. game makes him out to be the Brutus. He's actually a different Brutus than the one that's famous for killing. They're Caesar. related, but he's not. He's not. Right, right. He's like a distant cousin of that yeah. Brutus. He's not the Etu guy. Yeah. 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 Although the game makes him out to be the Etu guy. And they even give right. him a uh, corny uh, Brutus ending when you kill him. I am a genius. <laughs> the best general that ever lived. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words, but nobody nobody would write that down if you said that. Don't proclaim your own genius on nope. your... As your last no. dying breath. That's not something people will remember. That is supposedly what Nero did. Is he? Did yeah, he? Yeah, when he, he like slit his own throat and said, "What a ge- oh, what a genius dies in me. I thought he was something pulling like, like a Charlie Daniels. And he was... <laughs> <laughs> Fiddle, Maybe. see. Uh, let's move. What's, what number is this? Number three. three. Yep. This is... Uh, Top seven heroes defamed by games. Yeah, this is an old favorite for Sword. anybody who played Samurai Showdown in the 90s. Woo! It's uh, Amakusa Shiro Tokisada. And uh, I was kind of pissed when I found out as a kid who this guy really was. And that he was basically Japan's answer to Joan of Arc. He was a Christian revolutionary who is a teenager who apparently some people ascribed visions to him, but uh, he was very charismatic and uh, his followers called him Heaven's Messenger. And he ended up leading an army about 37,000 strong. Uh, It was called the Shimabara Rebellion. Basically, they were fighting against the state-led persecution of Christians mm-hmm. and just kind of general oppression and overtaxation. And it's a little bit more complicated than I want to go into. But <laughs> the long story, long story short, uh, it ended in this big siege at Hara Castle, where uh, all thirty. When it ended, it, it lasted for months, and when it ended, all thirty-seven thousand were basically rounded up and beheaded. Oh my! And it was this enormous loss of life. Oh the, the whole peninsula had to be resettled, and uh, so in Samurai Showdown, he appears as like this weird, <laughs> effeminate, yeah, this, this effeminate sorcerer <laughs> who's spreading a dark and evil religion. And uh, yeah, it wasn't until I was researching this article that I found out, like, oh no, that that's not supposed to be Christianity. Like, he is that guy, but then mm. like. It's like a hundred years after he was killed, his vengeful spirit made a pact with the dark god Ambrosia, oh, no. and then he went around you know, spreading blues. the word about Ambrosia. Oh. Have you heard about Ambrosia? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about the word about Ambrosia. Yeah. Have you heard the bad news? <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Have you heard the bad news? You don't own Ambrosia. <laughs> yeah, and I also found out in researching this that... Uh, that particular characterization of Amakusa and a mm-hmm. lot of the other characters in Samurai Showdown seems to have come directly from this movie from 1981 called oh. Makai Tensho. That, I mean, Samurai Showdown kind of, I hesitate to say it ripped it off wholesale, but there's a lot of very clear influences mm-hmm. there. Among other properties. Yeah, and it, it kind of just lays down this idea that, like, Amakusa is, is so horrified at, like, you know, it starts out in the introduction, there's just these piles and piles of corpses and like headless you know just severed heads everywhere and he's sort of wandering around in this like just expressing horror that like you know a loving god would allow something like this to happen so he's like well it's good that you're all going to heaven but I'm pledging myself to hell so I can avenge this Mm. so he becomes an evil sorcerer oh no oh no so what's his name again I forgot uh, I know you forgot. Amakusa Shiro Tokisada. Um, look, I was even doing research on it. And I could, God, is this the right guy? Yeah, he's Amakusa or Amakusa so or whatever the hell people want to pronounce it. No. Go for it. Once Tyler. again, you don't need 30,000 troops. You just need a lower taxes, give them rice, yeah. give them gold. <laughs> I should say 37,000... Marry your daughters away to form alliances. 37,000 troops holding out against an army of 125,000 for several months, during which the army of 125,000 had to call in Dutch artillery support. Jeez! Yeah, so... Uh, (laughs) (laughs) All right, all right. (laughs) That night they dined in hell. (laughs) 
Yes, that was Sparta. Uh, number two. <laughs> number two. Uh, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. Yeah. What a dick. Yeah, yeah it was kind of. Guy. It was kind of a toss-up between Thomas Ed- Edison and Henry Ford. But whereas, <laughs> and, and it, it all comes down to one key thing because they're both uh, pretty well defamed in Assassin's Creed Two. Better mustache. And, and all these what? Better mustache. Better mustache. Edison, right? I don't think either of them had a mustache. Well, I think I'm thinking of Mark Twain. <laughs> <laughs> a common mistake I see. among scholars. <laughs> yeah. No, no, he wore his mustache over his ear like a yeah. sideburn. Oh, exactly. see, yeah. 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 Oh, he, he had a side mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them. Side <laughs> mustache. Yeah. No, he one. called them his thinking stashes. Yes, <laughs> like Wolverine. Occasionally, he just sort of pulled them down from his ears <laughs> onto his upper lip. <laughs> When he needed, when he was really pressed, when he for wanted an idea. to really conduct electricity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you know, the, the difference is that like, it, it all comes down to one key thing, where it's like there's this letter you find in the game that's addressed from uh, Henry Ford to Thomas Edison, mm-hmm. saying like, "Oh yeah, uh, that piece of Eden that you gave me. Yeah, I gave it to Hitler. This should be pretty great because he's going to kill a bunch of Jews, and uh, I think Europe could really benefit from that." And so just just the fact that, you know, it portrays Edison as having received this letter from Henry Ford, that it's just like it basically makes the case Edison was complicit in the rise of the Nazi party. And that, like, okay, Edison was kind of a dick. And yeah. he may have ripped off most of his inventions from his employees, and he sort of fucked over Nikola Tesla, but it's like that just seems a little much. Yeah, I don't think it was in his best interest to support him. Nazis. No. No, he was just a monopolistic, yeah, uh, like, greedy, greedy mofo. Yeah, but there's no evidence to say he, you know, would have been pals with Hitler like Henry Ford kind of was. <laughs> no, Henry Henry Ford. That, that's another thing. There's no evidence that that admiration necessarily went Henry Ford to Hitler. There is evidence that Hitler kept a photo of Henry Ford in his office. And that he awarded a very like the highest honor Germany could give to foreigners mm-hmm. to Henry Ford. Here, here's the thing: how, say, in like nineteen, in the late thirties, you're mm-hmm. friends with Hitler. Yeah. How long would it take for you to cut off your friendship? What would Hitler like? Just he's just starting World War Two. What would you be like, dude? We cannot be seen together anymore, Hitler. <laughs> Hitler, let's not. No, no. There's no way I'm going with you to miniature golf. No, I don't no. want to see your that's, new painting. That's retarded. Especially <laughs> no, I, no, I don't want to see your new painting. Uh, no. no, I don't want my own Polish city. That's very sweet. Look, yeah. can't talk to you anymore, no, Hitler. Please don't name it after me. I really don't need that kind of publicity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brett, do you have anything you'd like to say about Assassin's Creed 2? Fuck that game and its stupid face. Brett Elston. Oh, oh. No. I thought Elston. it was pretty good. I know. Oh. I just, Brett, you did. Jesus. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> All right. Number two. You know what? I, you will I, can't I liked that. the climbing gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was will, a lot of gameplay hey, in okay, that Okay, this yeah. is fun. No, oh, okay. You got, you got yeah. Brett on your side. You swayed yeah, him. He's, he's, not, he's yeah. unflappable. Uh, <laughs> we will hear more about that, Edison, in a second. Let's, is this number one? Yep. Number one. <laughs> number one is Dante Alighieri. Again, I like this because this is <laughs> probably the most I'll read about history uh-huh. on, on my own accord ever, okay. ever from here on out. Good, and I like that. Do you see what you did, Michael? You made Chris learn. <clears throat> yeah, I don't oh, have time man. to learn. I'm too busy <laughs> reading about the horrible thing. <laughs> but yeah, Dante. Th- this is the thing that uh, Dante's Inferno. The way it portrays Dante is sort of like if you made a game 800 years from now about Kurt Vonnegut. And, <laughs> no! <laughs> and and you, you put him in the Civil War, and you made him a war criminal in the Civil War. You better not fucking do that. That's, that's kind of what uh, Dante's Inferno does in that it, it... Okay, Dante was actually born 73 years or whatever... After, after after the Third Crusade ended, yeah. uh, the Third Crusade was the one people think about all the time with Richard the Lionhearted and Saladin and, and blah, mm. blah, 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 blah. Uh, it not only makes him a crusader in the Third Crusade, but it also makes him, and this is a spoiler, it makes him responsible for the this uh, atrocity that happened where basically King Richard massacred 3,000 Muslim prisoners at Accra. 
it basically absolves Richard of any guilt. Like it, it basically has Dante flying into a rage and just like instigating the slaughter of three thousand people. And then Richard comes in and he's like, "Oh God, what's happened here? Who's responsible for this? Execute that man!" I am the oh. true king of England. There are yeah. songs about me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the shittiest king ever. What the hell? <laughs> I. I He's didn't. I didn't say I'd sell London if I could only find a buyer. Maybe would. <laughs> maybe you wouldn't have died if your head wasn't pointed towards your god. Mm. Maybe. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Let me give myself one That's of these. Terrible. For my- <laughs> I should not have gone along with that. Show. <laughs> <laughs> I uh-huh. regret it. Now. Uh-huh. He rode the roller coaster. <laughs> The lower uh, <laughs> uh, You had your arms up and everything. Do not represent the opinions of Michael Rapaz. <laughs> yes. Oh <laughs> uh, fuck! I forgot what we were talking about. But yeah, I'm looking. Oh, Dante's right. Yeah. Da- Dante. I'm looking forward to in 800 years reading a uh, an adaptation of Cat's Cradle that continually no. flashes back to the Civil War. It <laughs> makes, <laughs> makes fucking Kurt yeah. Vonnegut That's responsible for Dresden. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was yeah, all him. It's kind of like that. Yeah, no. in, in like 2,000 years, we'll, we'll be reading about how James Cameron uh, was responsible for the Avatar or the uh, <laughs> massacre on Pandora. The massacre taking yeah, down yeah. the Tree of Life. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that bastard. That thing that really happened, yeah. <laughs> according to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> that was the top seven. That was, was our top seven feature. And now... No, 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 no. There's no need for that. Nope. Um, <laughs> Can I just say I love the commenter who said, Michael, I want you to be my history teacher. <laughs> yeah. But you are, you are kind of a history buff, right? Mm-hmm. A little bit. A little I bit. remember a little bit just because we I like, hey, did you guys see fucking John Adams on HBO last night? And you were like, what the fuck? They were portray- you were mad about the Ben Franklin portrayal or something like that? Was I? Yeah, or something like that. That could be. I, you know, that wasn't in my history book. I didn't know. <laughs> That's just the way it is. And that show you linked to in your article is fucking awesome. Terry yeah, Jones, what is it? Medieval Lives. Medieval Lives. It is fucking fantastic. It's on Netflix. Watch instantly or yeah. whatever that's called. Uh, T- Terry, or Terry Jones. Terry Jones. Uh, yeah. Terry Jones, Medieval Lives. It's just ridiculously fascinating. He just kind of it explodes all these myths uh, and we find out that it's like most of what we think we know about you know the the dark ages we actually know from victorian revisionists and mm-hmm. it was nothing like that at all beautiful yeah it's quite a quite a good show we will go to break and when we get back we'll talk about new releases alpha protocol mm-hmm. and how you can win this kick ass bioshock split reason shirt Ooh. and uh, and <clears throat> But before that, to delve a little more into Edison's past, I'm going to play a little bit of Funnier Dies Drunk History about uh, Tesla, but Yay. it involves a lot of Thomas Edison. And do yourself a favor, if you care at all, go watch the video, because that's the best. I shouldn't even be playing this. The video is the best part. Drunk History, <laughs> Thomas Edison, BRB. Nikola Tesla was the father of Western technology. For everything we know is like modern electricity, Tesla invented that. He also invented wireless technology. He invented the radio. Supposedly, one day, he was taking a walk in a park, and he suddenly experienced this tremendous flash of light. And he saw in his mind the perfect blueprint of an engine that would create something called alternating current. And that was when he was like, I have to go to the United States to meet Edison. I'll meet Edison. So Tesla sailed across the ocean, found Edison, who at the time was like the king of electricity. Edison and was like, oh, all right. Well, I guess you can, you can work for me. And... His job was, like, his job was digging (laughs) ditches for Edison. And from this guy Westinghouse, like, gave him money to uh, start, like, working on his idea of alternating current. So Edison didn't like the idea of alternating current because he owned all the patents on direct current. Alternating current was the only... (laughs) Too drunk. Ah, I can't do it. Yes, you can. (laughs) 
going to start fuging. Westinghouse and Tesla won the contract to supply all the electricity to the World's Fair. And this pissed Edison off. He was like, fuck this. Uh, alternating current is bad. Alternating current will only cause massive deaths. And so he started this campaign to prove the alternating current was like the worst current you could use. What he did is he began to like publicly electrocute animals. Edison was an asshole. He was like taking like sheep and being like, look what happens when the sheep touches the alternating current. Oh, it, blow it gets electrocuted. Look what happens when a cow comes in contact with the alternating current. It dies. Tesla was horrified. And he'd be like, this is awful. I am inventing electricity and you look like an asshole. You look like a fucking idiot. I'm gonna throw up. Can't do it. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Tesla uh, discovered the energy to run the world's fair. And at that moment, Tesla became an international figure worshipped by everyone. So, Tesla had, like, a, a laboratory. And, like, Mark Twain and like everybody who was famous in the world would come to the laboratory. So he'd like do things like make electricity, shoot around his body. People would be watching like, look at him, he's on fire. Mark Twain would be there crying. The new idea he had was that I don't think you necessarily need to have like power plants for there to be electricity. I think that you can take electricity from the air. This was directly opposed to uh, all of capitalist society. So he was basically ostracized from society. <laughs> How did this come out of my body? There are pieces, there's pineapple pieces. Like I know I chewed it. That's pretty funny. Talk radar, bitches. All of a sudden, I could feel 100% evil come over me. Whoopee! I'm going to GamesRadar.com, the official website of the internet. Can you dig it? <laughs> Smokers cough too. Tyler and Agata, you're questioning my tolerance of alcohol. You're an intolerant man. No, I'm just questioning your tolerance in general. Okay, come on. Oh. Come on. Oh. oh. Chris is racist. Um, <laughs> Chris Call me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Can I start calling you Chrissy A? I like that. Chrissy A? Yeah, like Chrissy like B. Chrissy A. Chrissy A. Chrissy A. Chrissy A's got a headache. Hey, Chrissy A, up on the mic for <laughs> Talk Radar 104.1. Oh. Point what? Point two. Point two. Segment two. Um. I will not allow you to question my tolerance because Gas Dog from Dublin, Ireland, has sent us authentic yeah. Irish Irish whiskey. Yeah, I mean wow. it says Irish whiskey on it. So I don't noble know how it game could be. journalists who are willing to give up your Wednesday evenings, get drunk, and make with the funny so consistently and thoroughly. Oh. Here's some whiskey. I like and Gas Dog. So do That's I. Nice of it, this is this is the weird line. I rest assured that as long as you are willing to make the podcast, I will be willing to listen. Even though I honestly couldn't give a shit about Mario, Mega Man, Final Fantasy, or Zelda, have we served you in any way? He didn't say Sonic. Yeah. He didn't say Sonic. Yeah, we do like to make fun of the. Sonic. So, what kind of whiskey is that, Tyler? Um, well, I've got a bottle of. Whiskey? I got a bottle of Powers Gold Label. This is triple distilled, my friend. I will not drink a uh, double distilled. No, I will not. Absolutely not at all. <laughs> and uh, Michael grabbed a bottle too. I grabbed a bottle of uh, Patty Old Irish whiskey. Oh, did you know? It doesn't oh. say how many times it's been distilled. <laughs> how many times? <laughs> That's why I won't be. Hey, well. <laughs> I feel like Grandpa Simpson today. Dickity two, no monogamous. You are once. Dickity two. So um, I guess we'll back in nine aught nine. What the hell? What? Not <laughs> <laughs> have a wee sip. Well, have a wee, wee sip, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead, go ahead. Have a have a little sip. Hey, little sip of little the powers. Of part your lips. Ah, oh, cilantro. Mm. Mm. Ah. Mm. Let me try that. Let me try that. 
Mm. Mm. Oh, why? Mm. That's, that's mighty fine. Oh, that's good. That is pretty oh, good. That is good. It's nice. Powers. They should sponsor us. Yeah. It's signed by John Powers. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Mine's um, signed by Patty Flaherty. Is it really? Oh, yes. What is with the Irish oh, signing their booze? That is some good fucking booze. Isn't it good? Yeah, it's pretty good. I was really scared when I opened the box because something like that heavy and it was wrapped mm. in a box of Christmas cards. Like I know this is shit or anthrax. Yeah. I know it. <laughs> and it was not. It Ooh, was can neither. I a, can I have a taste? Oh, give me. Oh, a give Tyler a god. Oh, yeah. give him a little taste. Oh, just, I don't yeah. know. I'm, I'm just gotten so used to whiskey equaling you know liquid fire that you know <laughs> this is actually some pretty good stuff. Yeah, you mind if I you mind if I pour yeah, a little yeah, back yeah, in my yeah. face? All right, this is the party. Put, put some in your face, hole. Oh, mm. smooth like the Irish country. Oh, that is good whiskey. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's good whiskey. Yeah, try go. It. It's like licking a baby's arse. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. The listeners can't see this, but we're playing past the whiskey. We are. We're drinking a lot of yeah, whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Just, and later we're going to mm. play spin the bottle. Oh, that's Ooh, pretty good. Sweet. I'm not, not as big a fan of the powers as I am Ooh. of the patty. It's got well, more alcohol. Let me try taste. the patty. Because I was... I what looked at it because I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I had like I've never had a headache before in my life. Like you I, need some Tylenol. I some <laughs> take a dose <laughs> of Tylenol. You need a double dose of Tylenol. I don't have <laughs> sound effect. We got extra strength going on right now. <laughs> right, right, right. Tylenol. You need. PM. You, you need sleep better. A dose of maximum strength Tylenol. That's right, Tylenol. <laughs> they call the Raquel function. Yeah, Tylenol. But I was. I haven't had a drink in like three days. Uh, I that's ridiculous. Yeah, I haven't. You I went a, to a wedding. Why didn't a, you drink? Yeah. Well, I, I got back on Monday, and I guess it's been two days. <laughs> maybe maybe 36 hours, come to think okay. of it. Okay. <laughs> well, that's still a wedding is all week. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Gazdog. You're making the lack of air conditioning in here much more tolerable. Yes. yes thank you, yes. Gazdog. Ooh, my sweat smells like beautiful Irish whiskey. Yay. <sighs> I did not... Weddings, I realized I don't mind. They don't seem as long as they used to. But Catholics? Who's a Catholic in here? I kind of am, nominally. What the fuck? I was baptized Catholic. They and? threw the water on me. They tried to drown me. Whatever that thing was yeah. they do when you're a baby. So <laughs> those <laughs> things are so long. It was a Catholic wedding you went One to? One of them yeah. was. Holy fuck. I've been One of them was. was. I've been oh, to those a couple the worst, of those. They're they terrible. Do a, they do a full mass, and if you were raised Catholic, yeah. then it's weird because all the programming kicks back in. <laughs> like, I, hadn't, I hadn't been to a... Uh, any any sort of church service like since I was 12 and I went to a Catholic wedding a few years ago and it was just like like that it just kicked right back so, in the peace be with you and also and with also you. with you yeah. so uh, if peace I were to stand up greater good yeah. if I were to stand up and put on a somber voice and tell give you to stand thanks to the Lord it is right to give him sit, thanks and praise kneel stand would you do it Dude. Could, I, could I convince you that you were back in mass I mean outs- no. outside of you know, fucking all the little boys and it, hiding no, it everyone else and owning all the land <laughs> and persecuting people in Italy. Mm-hmm. That shit is really weird. Like, you walk in there and I... What did I say in the... Co- it's like the stonecutters from The Simpsons. <laughs> oh. Like a bunch of people <laughs> chanting at this weird thing. And we then, do. Then, like, the pause for a second so we can sing this hymn. Like, oh, a song. Lord, oh, Lord, 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 Huge boner for the fucking Lord. <laughs> like, not a single song differs. Like, it's, it's so weird that a religion would um, have a boner for their god. <laughs> it doesn't matter. All I did was replace it with us, or like the zeitgeist of the room. They're just patting themselves in the back. We've gotten this far, guys. That's all. Everybody give thanks to yourselves. Yeah, no. Otherwise, this giant... Those- Stupid tabernacle with your stupid ghost Jesus yeah. on the back. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm a Catholic, I can say this shit. Churches are either really cold or really hot, and you you have to deal with it yeah. either way. That is basically, I, 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 it's just a place where you sit for an hour and your mother occasionally yells at you for picking your nose. And I, and I really like it. That's exactly what it was. And just wait around for communion, because after communion came the stupid announcements from the church bowl, and then, then we could leave. Right. <laughs> my, my fucking girlfriend is like, they're doing a mass. Get off Twitter. Get off Twitter. <gasps> like you were tweeting during mass. I was trying to tweet the mass. <laughs> if you were following what? my Twitter at CNTista, I was. I saw the mass conference. And even creepier, <laughs> even creepier. There was this little kid, this like kid with fucked up spiky hair and giant glasses. I'm like, dude, he looks like Fuller from Home Alone. So I, so I, I start inching down the pew and trying to take a picture of this child in the middle of a Catholic mass. What are you doing? He's like, I got the perfect line. Fuller, go easy on the Pepsi, right? Like, oh, your voice! It's a Pepsi. 
Oh, oh fuck me. Naughty, naughty boy. Oh, you had a How dare you, you not be bored during <laughs> that? <laughs> That's all you're supposed to do. You just sit there I, and be bored. And I What's wrong with you? I have to say, and I wouldn't have conducted myself like that in any other religion, but I I'm, I feel like I was I was baptized against my will. You have to own up to me, Catholics. Oh. I'm part of you. So there's a bit of it. <laughs> you like, I'm inside you. You have inside your children. <laughs> I'm inside you. Literally. <laughs> Yes, my uh, ethereal tentacles are in all your altar boys. Yep. Well, this was a sacrilegious... Be better yours than others. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mine's way cleaner. Right. Mm -hmm. I keep it trimmed down there. Yeah. When was the last time you manscaped wild? Um, recently. Recently? Yeah. What'd Last you do? Week. How do you do it? Just sit, sit on the toilet and that, get, exactly. get scissors. And you sit on the toilet. Well, we're, you don't want the hair in the trash can. Your roommate might see that shit. You don't want it because there's... Pubic hair is distinct from every other hair yeah, in your body. You know. I remember one time I like pulled something out of my pocket to give it to you, and you're like, "There's a pube on that." And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, no, there isn't. Why would there be a pube in my pocket? There was a pube. There was a pocket. Pocket. <laughs> How did that get in there? I don't Crazy know. Crazy things happen in the washer. It's a yeah. godlike gag where it attached your keys through your pocket. <laughs> I think, I think pubes are like limpets or, or yeah. mushroom spores. They just sort of yeah, fly they, around invisible and then get everywhere. <laughs> That's what I think because when your girlfriend goes to the bathroom, there's a pube on the toilet. Yeah. I swear to God, all I did was... I don't know how that happened. I, I'm not throwing pubes all over the We're place. Migratory. I better not be walking around like a, a, a pube pig pen like, from that's a That's not a pube, it's a silverfish. A pube, a, pube, a pube pig pen from the peanuts. Like this cloud of hair following me wherever I go. Dusting everybody's house. You're a pube pen. With my yeah, gen pube genital pen. DNA. Yeah. Yeah. Are in well, town. you had a fun weekend. <laughs> we did. You had a fun weekend, too. Yeah, I went to Santa Cruz. To, uh, I to, think that's cool. And no one outside of California will get the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk in the warm California. Sun. Boardwalk! They've been playing the same commercial, commercial for since years. I was two years old. And uh, help, it's where they filmed Lost Boys. Does that help anybody else um, in the listening uh, audience? Yeah, Santa Cruz. You know, there's roller coasters. There's mm -hmm. a beach. It's really hot. And they hate smokers in Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. Really? Like, literally everywhere I went, you can't smoke here. I was smoking on the street downtown, and then we went up to this, like, little kiosk to, like, that had food to get lunch. Just so you know, smoking's illegal on the street. Yeah. But then they have a sign on there, like, we respect the right of homeless people to sleep where they would like... Why can't I smoke? <laughs> you can't oh you, you're, you're disturbing the homeless people, <laughs> oh, sir. I love living... <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get that. It's like... You're making it illegal to smoke outside? Outside. <laughs> like, know. that's like, like, don't fart out here, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, I That's just, what's next! Yeah. Nah, I won't it go just reminds me, it just reminds me, it's I like, love... It dissipates. If, if you're not standing right next to somebody, you're not going to get that much smoke. <laughs> I love living in a liberal state, but I also hate how they're only liberal when <laughs> it... it you know their the ideology that it is met. Oh it yeah, suits yeah. Their ideology. For, like some wide, mm -hmm. like blanket smoking. Because if band. I had been smoking weed, they would have been like, "Cool, man." Right on, dude. Right on, dude. <laughs> oh man, yeah, exactly. You should hide you that before kinda... our cops sees. Yeah, yeah. So, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. I'm not gonna tell. Ew, a cigarette. Get away from me, <laughs> you <laughs> sick fuck. That's not a what, douchey at all. What if it's a all. spliff? Like, what if you roll up like uh, a cigarette? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my mistake, sir. You're, maybe you're, that's. Half okay. it legitimately, like, I think uh, that would confuse them. In ten years, an officer will have to say, "Oh, a spliff! You're free to go. Right. <laughs> right. You're free to go. Right. When you're exactly. taking it for cigarettes." That could happen. Right. And I, I lay on the beach, the warm beach. Someone on Twitter was like telling me today, like, "You guys in the U.S. get so shafted by cell phone companies." And I noticed oh, yeah. he was in the U.K. And I was like. Yeah, okay, but I made up for it by lying on a warm beach all ah. weekend. <laughs> ah. Ah, but of course, I forgot to put sunscreen on my legs. <laughs> and on your like, legs. A, like a child. Ah, uh, yes. And now I look like a lobster. Uh, next you medically late for work, as I recall. <laughs> yes. Well, I was up all night. Like, the sheet just touched my leg. Ah, ah. okay. I was about to fall asleep, but something... T uh, a hair on my leg, like, Ooh. fell imperceptibly and just... Grace. Ah, ah, I'm awake. <laughs> and then um, I hate sunblock. And when next time we go to you, too. you gave me the idea that I'm going to sunblock every part of my body but a circle around my face, so I can go <laughs> as like a offensive menstrual Indian. <laughs> <laughs> you should do that. You need Vaudeville some aloe. Nice. Yeah, no, I I rubbed yeah. aloe on it. You want to check this out? You want to see something cool? I'm going to touch you. No, don't touch. Let me, me touch you. 
I mean, I swear to God, it'll feel good. Some girl did this to me. It was like the what greatest thing. <laughs> Just let me see your sunburn. Let me see your sunburn. You're let not a fucking girl. Okay. I'm not a girl. I'm and by the girl. way, like this makes me regret being a filthy, despicable Does it hurt? because all my goddamn pants are so. Does tight. it still hurt? Yeah, it still hurts. All right, all right. Watch. Does that feel better? It feels like your hands on my leg. I know, but it get get rid of all that. I mean, Hold it's on. a little arousing. Drop your comfort barrier. Just, just now you're stroking my. No, no, no. Foot. I'm just trying to get you more comfortable. Oh, that's <laughs> that's what they say before they. <laughs> no, but it, seriously, does the sunburn feel better? Feels all right. See, told Thank you. you. Thank Aww, you. I believe the sweat from your palm. I it. get a victory noise. Uh, Can I just say I had the opposite smokers culture shock experience? Where? When I went to Spain mm, and I mm. stepped off the airplane. And as soon as people stepped off the airplane, they started lighting their cigarettes. Like, like, on why the, on aren't the you stairs? smoking? <laughs> you asked, yeah. I was told <laughs> flabbergasted. Te fumas, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember you, I was standing in line in the customs area, and um, there was a surly-looking businessman in a suit in front of me, and there was also a mother holding a child. And the dude in the business suit lit up a cigarette, and he looked at this darling little baby that the mother was holding, and he was like, he just kind of said with his face, what a cute little baby. And he just exhaled straight into the baby's face. And then the baby let out the cutest cough. It was like... <laughs> I'm like, what? I had just come from San Francisco. Oh my god, did you see, did you see the uh, the two-year-old smoking child baby? Oh yeah, I saw On, that video. It's insane. He's addicted to smoking and he can't move. But he cool. smokes like two packs a day, and he's yeah. two years old, and he, he just blows like perfect that <laughs> It's, it's, it's awesome, and his dad like thinks, oh, there's nothing wrong with him. He just likes smoking. I'm like, yeah. where are you? <laughs> where are you? I was, I was in Wisconsin. I was, I was in Wisconsin in Madison at the college, and they had this place called The Terrace. And it's called The Terrace. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a nice bar. It's in the college. You have to be an alumnus to buy cheap booze there. And it's the entire waterfront with a band playing outdoors. And I'm like, what the fuck? Do, do, does anybody get in a fight here? Nah, never. Is there ever a problem? Like, with pl- no, no, never, never, never. And like, this is amazing. And I'm sitting outside and like, get to smoke a cigarette. And oh, you can't smoke out here. Ah, uh, okay, I can't smoke it here. I'm in Wisconsin with a bunch of overweight, beer guzzling, <laughs> cheese gulping, completely <laughs> overweight people. <clears throat> I'll try and find a place to smoke, and I find an employee about a mile away. This place was huge, the terrace, <laughs> and uh, some Madison University. You're going to hate me for not remembering, but you're the Badgers. Uh, <laughs> and I ask an employee, where can I smoke? Oh, man, no one's ever asked me that before. There's, there's hundreds of people <laughs> here. Oh, where, my God. We think where, we're where am I supposed to smoke? He's like, uh. I tell you what, if you go out by the parking lot, no one will know. And it's like I'm overlooking hundreds of people enjoying like this world music playing that universal world music song, the one that goes, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> I don't know. It's just the ay, ay, ay song. Ay, 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 ay. Boop, 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 boop. My Cowbell. experience, you know, I it's mean, I know it's Santa Cruz, but I'm standing on a beach, which is basically a giant ashtray. It is giant. And, and smoking. Uh, sorry, you, you can't smoke on the beach. It's the It's, it's the beach. The beach. I was in the Gulf right now. I could light it on. I could light my cigarette with the water. <laughs> but then, like, it just made me recognize how much I love San Francisco. Because even the hippies in San Francisco don't give a fuck about sort anything. Of. No one in San Francisco yeah. gives sort a of. fuck. There, there is one thing from the last time I went to Spain that I'm still trying to figure out. My dad posed me this question. It's like I'd never thought about it before. But all my relatives in Spain smoke like fucking chimneys indoors <laughs> in, in these apartments that in Madrid, bad. and the place doesn't smell like smoke. Isn't ever. that fucking weird? I want to know why. The second you light no, up a cigarette in your house, like it, you can't smell anything else. Right. And then people who smoke in their houses all the, the time, yeah, yeah, it, it doesn't smell at all. Is it just because you get used to it immediately? I don't think so. I because don't like you know, walking in there, like you would normally notice a smell of smoke, and then you get used to it. But mm. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, you think they just smoke a crazy amount in Italy? <laughs> cigarettes? We haven't smoked cigarettes for years. <laughs> these are no, these are totally. This these is water bees. vapor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this is this is powdered sugar. <laughs> these are candy cigarettes. That's that's unhealthy. You're, you you Americans it, are crazy. Could it have to do perhaps with the ingredients in the cigarettes? Oh like my. maybe they have different. Uh, oh my, they do vary cooking? from yeah. from country to country, yeah. even the same brands. Yeah, mm. having smoked. Oh, my my dad thinks it has to do with like the brick construction that that doesn't oh. travel. Holy shit! Oh. Like the the, the non stucco like fucking yeah, right. asbestos. Mm-hmm. Right. Weird. Well, I'm sure I'm gonna smoke at home when I get back. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's an old house. I think you should. That's an old so, house. This is a game podcast. Yeah, I'm aware games. of this. 
I'm aware of this. Are you really? Hey, you I know, in Metal Gear, you could smoke That's right. Oh, yeah. shit, yeah. <laughs> Not without reading it. Actually, we the brought subject it all matter. back. Well done. Not uh, without, there you go. Tyler Nagata. Me, bring you it a, back. Bring you're going to tell us now. Bring it back. back. There are, there are beaches back. in some video. Like, Normandy appears. That's yeah, a beach. Yeah, that's beach. And I was also on a beach this yeah. weekend. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> there remember, you go. Remember TNC oh. Surf. I, I Remember was. TNT Radio. Like, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's going to happen again. In fact, I want you guys to handle uh, the new releases. Um, also, oh, uh, th- uh, out this week, Tyler Wild. What? Backbreaker. Ba- ah, I've that seen like painful. ads for that on cabs, and they don't say what it is. They just say backbreaker. It's very weird. Well, I think it's, I'm fo- like, it's football. Yeah. But they it, don't have... It's like I think it's the first people to go uh, go into football without any kind of license. I think someone tried the Arena Football League. Mm. Yeah, I mean, basically what they're selling the game on, as I understand it, is their technology, mm-hmm. which allows for really dynamic tackles. Yes. And that's what the ads just say. They don't even say that it's a game, which confused me. What's it getting right also now? Also known um, as DTs. Okay, right now it has a 57 on, on Metacritic. Metacritic. Yeah, the highest score is an 87 from Gaming XP. Oh, I love my, my, yeah, my friends love, at XP. Love the... Yeah... It, well, it can't reach the likes of Madden because of the missing licenses and some minor gameplay gitchet, glitches. Gitches. Gitchet. Perfect. <laughs> you know, whatever. Gidget, the girl midget. You guys remember yeah, I that? Got, I, I, you got that? What? You never... Okay, never mind. No, no. Game Informer gave it a 50. It's the, no, no. I mean, the lowest scores are like a 50 from IGN and from Game Informer. It no. says the Euphoria technology, which is the technology mm. they're you know promoting... It's a great building block for a football game, but Backbreaker suffers from too many rookie mistakes. Ooh. So, basically, it sound, sounds to me kind of like they've made a, a tech demo that's yeah. good for a tech demo, but yeah. not a great football game. Which, I mean, I'm just, that's an assumption. I don't know that. I haven't played it. But that that's kind of what I got from it when they were promoting it, is they kept saying, like, Euphoria technology is great. It's like, yeah, but is it... Is it a good football game? Like, do you have all the plays that does, I would want? Does that matter? Does anyone care? <laughs> well, I mean... Might? Yeah, people who like football games will want to play the best one, right? Goodness. Yes. Football games yes. are out of my league. Ten- oh! 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 See, you know what? What you did there is... I see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh! oh, oh, oh sorry. We are getting... Far too drunk on the whiskey. Oh, somebody rented it and even put it on the circus. Um, <laughs> oh man, get started! Right. Oh, I can buy it. Tyler Nagata gets fucking delicious. If Wait, I was just I reviewing like whatever Madden, <laughs> Madden, you know what? O ten for me personally, not for a website or a magazine. Sure, I could see myself giving it a five. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't play Madden. I don't think I did. I don't Would think I'd be the it? right guy right. to you review. You wouldn't be the right guy. Madden, yeah. Madden I think you know, for like reviewers, does that good thing of like, well. You're doing it wrong. It, like I'm always right. convinced I'm doing. I'm. I don't know enough. Yeah. yeah. Right. When yeah, I hate that's it. That's true. Right. And I, I'm. I'm guessing that's what Backbreaker does right. not do. Yeah. But you know, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to conclude TNT Radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Euro For Gamer Italy said it was okay because I have to bring Michael back into this. Oh. Because yeah. what? Yeah. On the have PS2, I been out of this? this week's uh, Siphon Filter Logan Shadow right came out. Okay. Is that a PSP game? Yeah, it was a PSP game, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was the sequel to Dark Mirror. And uh, I'd completely forgotten that it was coming out, or otherwise I probably would have had it as a better than in the review for Alpha Protocol. Ah, what did you use? Metal Gear Solid? Uh, Metal Gear Solid for... Splinter Cell Conviction. Yeah, Splinter Cell Conviction and um, Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect. I think those were all more relevant. Uh, probably. Mm-hmm. Well, but you haven't played Siphon. I haven't, but did you play the PSP one? I did. Did you, you, I think I reviewed it. For I think us, you liked actually. it. I did like it quite a bit. Is there uh, is there any benefit to it coming to PS2? A uh, second analog stick. Yeah. Um, that's about it. I I actually have had. I, I really don't like uh, PSP games that come to PS2 because they're rarely upscaled in any way. They look like just really low res versions of the PSP games, which sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I don't know. There's just something about PS2 controls these days that it's like it, it's gotten a bit clunkier than it used to be. I think the the um... they don't they've stopped trying, but I don't know. Maybe because there's such a a delay in between the PSP release and the PS2 release, mm-hmm. maybe it's had time to to kind of finish cooking and. Is a bit better. I don't know. So what's that getting on the, oh, yeah, the Metacrats? What's the full title? Siphon filter. Siphon, Logan Siphon. Shadow. Siphon. Logan Shadow. Yeah. I, 
Siphon Filter, I feel like, is one of those game names we just take for granted. A <laughs> siphon and a filter. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> or you're siphoning something through a filter? It was, well, <laughs> it was somewhat relevant because in the first game it was the name of a virus. Oh. Uh, so but, do um, not buy the uh, yeah. funnel screen. Okay, I think I spelled yeah. siphon correctly, which is wrong in this case. Siphon. There we go. I spelled it with an I. And it's with a Y. Is that with a PSP game? It is an 85 on Metacritic. So For the PS2 good. version? The, oh, the PSP version, sorry. I don't even... I'm sure nobody's reviewing yeah, no, it. Yeah, nobody gives a shit. Yeah, the PS2 I, I, I didn't get any press releases about it. I don't even know. No, it kind of it came out without a lot the, of fans. The PS2 yeah. version is not on Metacritic. The PSP version got shocked. an 85. Mm, got a hundred from a couple places. Yeah, I'd say it's a shame to see that that franchise peter out, but I'm so used to it with Sony franchises. I think the PSP games were really good. Yeah, I mean, as PSP games go, they were pretty fantastic. Much better than the PS2. Was the PS2 ones? Yeah, there was. I think a PS2 there was some bad PS1. One. Yeah, the the Omega Strain mm-hmm. was the the P- bad PS1, and, and I think they kind of started to go downhill after the first one. Yeah, I never really played two or three, but yeah, it's it's like. One of those things I lost interest in pretty early on. Mm-hmm. Well, fine, we can move on. Yeah. Okay, Good. Tyler, Good. did you play this th- out this week? The Sims Ambition. Wait, first I need more whiskey. Oh, uh, whiskey, whiskey for uh, Tyler. No, I haven't. But so uh, I, I did post a preview about it. Did you really? I, oh, I did. How? What? Oh, what the yeah. fuck is Ambition? It um it it adds a new town for you to live in mm-hmm. with your Sim, and it adds. New, um, new careers yeah. that are more interactive. I think. <laughs> that is so in the that like is. in the in the regular Sims three, when you go to work, it's kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. But but in the Sims three ambitions, blue blue blue, blah 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 blah. What's that? Sims three, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, for real. Is it with some flabby zibi one? I feel like we're making fun of the French now. Oh, Sims! There's some rumor about um, Sims Medieval expansion, Ooh. which is the coolest Sims news I've ever fucking heard. Huh? Like Medieval Sims? Maybe, That'd maybe, maybe. Cool. Look for look at E3. <laughs> Yeah. That'd be fun when they need to go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and why is they never did that? They can, add, your they can add a latrine emptying yeah. thing. There's like one more mundane task to keep you from doing what you well, want to do. I guess the Sims never... They never Upgrade they, your cooking skills so you can make mutton. Mutton. <laughs> no, no, it was salted <coughs> pork. <laughs> no! <laughs> Smoke TV. Every time you sin, you have to pay the church. Look, uh, great. I'm going to milk a cow into a bowl of wine and eat the results. Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> now let's say that as if it were... I'm going to milk a cow with a bitch in my How do you speak Simlish I, I should, with a medieval I should. <laughs> Dan Amrick uh, recorded a song in Sam- Simlish, and we made he fun did. of... Uh, we weren't making fun of Dan last week when he ran his Red Dead thing. He yeah. emailed me. He's like, okay, look. <laughs> really? Okay, look. Really? I was the only one in charge of this shit. And like, and like no, Dan, Dan, it wasn't... <laughs> we were saying you did a bad him? job. Huh? I said, I'm, I'm amazed he felt the need to justify I know. I, I was like, God, I wish I had him on. Because we were just calling it sort of a relic. <laughs> and it's funny you did it because it was old. That's because, all. one, it's like Reverend Capcom's... Well, it, was, it was weird for me because I'm looking for Red Dead Revolver music mm-hmm. and I'm just like scouring YouTube and all of a sudden like I hear Dan's voice. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> yes, it Michael is a found small this. world. Michael found this and it's just the, the first line out of your mouth is Capcom's dead Red Dead Revolver and the second reference is to Rising Xan. Yep. <laughs> I'll think, hey, look, Dan, you are synonymous with Rising Sand. <laughs> and I I should have just emailed him back and been like, Dan, I'm sorry. I just but called the game Dan Amrick now. <laughs> Dan Amrick. Trying to play some Dan Amrick. <laughs> Red Amrick Revolver. <laughs> Red Amrick. There's a Photoshop. Rising I miss Dan. Dan. The Amrick I miss Dan. Rising Dan. Dan. No, the Samurai Amrick. There we go. <laughs> the Samurai Amrick. <laughs> the Samrick. <laughs> uh, also, I didn't, even, I didn't even hear this ever existed. Call of Duty Collection. I saw uh, out this yeah. week on Amazon. What do you think's in the Call of Duty collection? Um, one, I'm going to guess Big Red 1 is in there. No, isn't that uh, Panda Brothers in Arms? Uh, no, Big Red 1's no, the Call Red of Duty one. game. Yeah. Is it? Oh, it yeah, is. There, there were right. a bunch of like second string That's ones right. produced for PS2 because it's like, we can't actually do the real Call of Duty yeah, game. So here's a, here's a shitty also ran. 
No, it's it's quite predictably like, wow, are they really going to put like modern the modern warfare's in a collection? No, they're going to throw all the Treyarch stuff in the one collection. Yeah. It's very weird. It's Call of one... Duty two, three, and wow, wow, World at War. Well, mm. two two was uh, Infinity War. It was, it? yeah, yeah, but three was not. Hmm. Not, uh, yeah. So they can't know. just they can't just take the uh, the slightly remastered version of one from Xbox Live and put that on the disc too. Very weird that you wouldn't include Xbox the Call of Duty one. Yeah, in the game. Am I wrong, Tyler? I guess so. Yeah, I'm looking... I guess they're trying to make money. Do you know what the collection's still, so... called? The Call of Duty collection it should be on Amazon. Okay. Well, because I'm looking at the Call of Duty War Chest collection, which is one, two, and United Defense. Oh, it's old. Yeah, it's old. old. This, but this is for like consoles and stuff. Consoles and stuff. Consoles rarely get a collection. Oh, it's the war collection. The war That's collection. That's what it is. Mm. Oh, is that the difference? Forgot yeah, it is, it is not Call the war of Duty chest. games weren't war war based. Yeah, I had no idea. It is the war collection. Amazon doesn't even say what's in it. But if I zoom in on the box, <laughs> includes three complete games. Two, three, and World at War. Yeah. So, whatever. Three was good. World at War was good. Two, I don't care. Yeah, about. I know. That's that's how much thing. does that cost? Um, it's it's sixty bucks what for three games. It's an okay deal, but uh, but I also hate that like there know. was news this week that Treyarch was going. Um, Treyarch is all Call of Duty now, mm. and of course people want to get upset and like, whoa, World of War was pretty awesome. It was a great game, yeah. And like in in terms of like it wasn't Modern Warfare. But and neither was Modern Warfare 2. Neither was Modern... Bruh, see? Right. Yeah, no. <laughs> Look at that, I like, got uh, Everyone's kind of down on Treyarch, um, and I think Infinity Ward kind of created a fake rivalry there with their, like, tongue-in-cheek rap and everything. But, like, whatever, well, Treyarch's done a good job. It's hard not to resent, you know, Activision saying, yes. like, oh, Infinity Ward never did anything good. I mean, Treyarch's the one we should really... Yeah, the, the uh, horse of course. Back but here. beyond all that, considering that Treyarch year, was using their engine... The year Treyarch's mm-hmm. Call of Duty... Mar- uh, Call of, Call of Duty World at War came out. It was the best first-person shooter on any plat on, on any console. It was a really good. It had the best multiplayer. It was, it was a great game. And I, you know, they, and we overlooked it because it wasn't modern warfare. Yeah, but it was, but it was good. I wouldn't yeah. say we overlooked it though. Yeah, we well, we, you know, the, the score is you played fall in with that, but like crazy. It, but people want to knock Treyarch because they make worse Call of Duty games than Infinity Ward. But yeah. Who can- like that they, that's not saying much. Didn't they also make Spider-Man Three? No, yeah. Or was, they, they, or was yeah. that Shaba? They also made Treyarch. Also made a, I believe, the Quantum of Solace game. They I believe did. that was Treyarch, and that oh, was not very good. Game deals. Uh, mm. I'm just saying it's not very good. No matter what the price, don't buy it. Anyway, game deal. Tyler, it don't matter none. Well, we're not going to game deals just yet. Tyler. Although supposedly oh. the PS2 version is much better. Oh, is it? It's completely different. Isn't it, is. it a third-person shooter? Uh, yeah. Well. It, whatever the the current gen version is, this one isn't. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it kind of goes to show when they simplify things for last generation consoles, they sometimes get better because they've taken out all of the stupid things that sometimes. they could do. But then, because you can do something. Then again, it's like should. every new game for the PS2 looks like shit to me, and then yeah, I go true. back and play like old games that. I used to think were graphically impressive, and mm-hmm. they still can be pretty graphically impressive. So yeah, it's like you're not true. even really trying. Anymore. Yeah, you gave uh, uh, what was it? Stranger's Wrath as an example of that. Yeah, like exactly. A very good I feel like game. what they're doing is they're taking like the high polygon models made for the next gen games and just kind of lazily moving them to the older consoles, yeah. rather simplifying than simplifying them until they run. Right, exactly. The Whereas before they would have been building them for the architecture of the PS2 right. and optimizing them to get the most. But now they're just kind of making lazy, lazy ports, you know, downscaling. That's not anything. cool, dude. That's not cool, dude. Not cool at all. Dude. 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 Not We're dude. all Michelle Tanner right now. Okay. New release this Number week. One. I'm gonna, oh, Jesus. Uh, new release this week. I have it as, uh, I'm written as, I'm writing it down as Outpro. Out pro, eh? out pro, out pro, out pro, out pro, yo, man, this out whiskey pro got me fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I'm it's delicious. Bad. You're it driving us home, fucking, I wow, There's actually been a this. lot of whiskey consumed in this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you really eat, drink the whole bottle. I, well, uh, I, I drink most yeah. of the bottle myself. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, have I'm, some I'm coffee. I'm feeling warm and pleasant oh, right now. Whiskey par is alpha I have protocol. To drive later. Talk to us about alpha out pro. Okay. Alpha yeah, protocol. I. uh I reviewed it for initially for P Tom and then got asked to do it for Games Radar as well. God, we suck. It is, ah, uh, it was a disappointment. Yeah. Overall, I mean, I gave it a seven, which is probably a little bit generous. 
But what it is is a really good story mm-hmm. that is accompanied by a really run-of-the-mill third-person stealth shooter where you can get by much faster and more easy if you just run around ignoring stealth and just shooting everything you see with a shotgun than you will if you try to actually sneak mm. around and be non-lethal or anything like that. That's, that's sad. So, yeah, I mean, it always sucks. First, first time I played through the game, it was really difficult because I was trying to be stealthy. I was trying not to kill anybody. And then second time through, it's like, fuck it, I'm just going to shoot everything that moves. And <laughs> I had a lot more fun that way, actually. Yeah. Well, it, it seemed like I a game died of, a lot less of like incredibly grand ambition. Yeah, that just and you like, can see it. And, you can see it. And there's this this comment that's been making the rounds in the last few days from Joystick, mm. and nobody's really refuted it yet. Uh, it's supposedly from one of the developers who worked on the project saying, "Yeah, it's just it's a victim of too many bells and whistles being added before." Uh, things were fixed, and that, that's another problem with the game. It's very buggy. It has this weird lack of polish. The the characters look kind of... I, I don't know. They, they It's just... The, there's something with the character models where they look kind of cartoonish and weird, and they have these weird facial expressions. Like, if if they're smiling, it's actually more like a this weird smirk mm-hmm. that stays rigid while they're talking. And it sounds like a Gary's mod, kind of. A... <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> The game was never really all that pretty to look at anyway. No, it's, it's not a pretty game. And that's the weird thing. Playing, I, I played some of Splinter Cell Conviction to compare it. Mm-hmm. And Conviction is immediately so much prettier. Mm-hmm. There's all this stuff going on with lighting yeah, effects. The and, you know, the light and shadow on, like, you know, Fisher's back as he's crawling around. It's like, there's nothing like that in Alpha Protocol. It's not a pretty game. Uh, well, I just found it remarkable right. that you and, and other reviewers praised its story, which games yeah, really get by on that. Was the story the saving grace? Uh, it is. Yeah? I, I thought so. Um, and, you know, it, it's kind of fun. I'm actually midway through my second playthrough right yeah. now. And uh, the story's easily the best part. You know, it's kind of interesting to just go back and say, like, okay, if I did this differently, because mm-hmm. it's not just... I mean, there's kind of two, two ways you make decisions. One is during conversations, mm-hmm. where you have this sort of Mass Effect-style... Uh, you know, button thing where, like, you press a different button to adopt a different stance. It's a, it's a dialogue style, not right. a dialogue. Right. You you don't choice. actually you're not actually picking responses. You're picking the tone of your response, whether you want to be professional, right. suave, or aggressive. I like that better. Which I like to be actually makes more sense by like, what I say. Sometimes it's a little more specific than that. Like, you know, it'll change to, like questioning, threatening, st- something like that. But it, it's still it's still asking for a response to a specific person that may, maybe is modeled. To to receive right. one request better than another. Mm-hmm. Same thing Mass Effect's yeah. doing, but you don't have to read through the entire well, tree. The thing is, this is kind of both a, uh, a positive and a flaw, oh, is no. that uh, every everyone you meet basically responds well to a certain kind of thing, so it's mm-hmm. just a matter of manipulating them to get the kind of response you want. And, you know, sometimes you want them to like you. And you can you can go through the game getting everyone you talk to to like you and to be your friend. Like, mm-hmm. you can turn enemies into allies, which is pretty cool. But, you know, sometimes it's to your advantage to get somebody to hate you because then really? you can you can fight. If you want to fight them later, then you can, that can knock them off balance and mm. make them more careless around you, give really? you damage bonuses, stuff like that. I've always found it fairly, fairly easy in Bioware games to, to give people responses, res- the responses they needed to get what I needed. Yeah, and that, that's the thing, that playing through the first time mm-hmm. is kind of like... The, the problem with Bioware games is that it's like, in order to be the bad guy, you have to be rude. Yes. And it's very hard to be rude mm-hmm. for, for most people, I think. And so it's sort of the same thing here. That like The first time through, I was just very professional with everybody. It's mm-hmm. like, because my initial reaction was like, well, you can you can do like what a, a normal human would do, which is professional, or you can act like an insane jackass, which is <laughs> suave or aggressive. Like, you know, you can... You can try to be professional around the uh, female co-worker who is very obviously professional, or you can... Stick your hand in her pants. Yeah, or you can continually just, you know, hit on her, and sometimes that works. I'm HR. No, don't! Don't. Sega HR. Oh. Yeah, uh, but, you know, then there's also, you know, trophies for sleeping with four different women in the game. <laughs> trophies. <laughs> Sexy. Time. You can tell I played this on PS3. <laughs> <laughs> And PC. I remember you like, yeah, Michael, what are you doing? I didn't play it on PC. And that, that's the thing. That the absolute worst part of the game is fucking lockpicking. 
That mm-hmm. is terrible. Isn't it always? Like, and you know, on on PC, it's really easy. And and I was actually pleasantly surprised to find that because what it is is you have to move these tumblers into place, mm-hmm. and there's like a little slot on them that you have to line up perfectly with this line. On um, PC, it's super easy because you just slide them into place with the mouse and mm-hmm. click them. And then on consoles, you have to actually hold down the left trigger in such a way that we'll get them perfectly lined up. And, you know, it's like on an analog thing. And, and on PS3, it's just excruciating. <laughs> because the PS3 triggers are not meant for very precise Yeah, work. I feel like we could do a whole article on lock-picking mechanisms in games yeah, because right. I feel like, like it's the, so common. And it's, it's just a question of ergonomics, Because really. I was playing what yeah. uh, Saw 2 at an event, like a... Which one? Nami event saw too. Like the mm. one it's coming out later this summer at some point. Dude, top seven lock picking mini games. I'm calling. Totally, it now. totally, totally. Yeah. Like the, the lock picking. Me- like you had to basically like use the analog sticks to fly through the lock as it spun, and basically you're like flying. Like there's just spinning metal discs with gaps in them, and you're flying through the gaps, and it was actually really difficult and annoying. I but I at least thought it was a different way to do lock picking. But I feel like everyone's like. We're going to creatively reimagine how to handle lockpicking minigames. I feel like people had week-long meetings about <laughs> lockpicking. Mm. Oh, well. Oh, Brett. Oh, oh hey, no, Brett. Oh, Brett. Are, we, uh, are, you still, are you still in the air? I or? immediately think of the, the Bioshock uh, retrofit these pipes. Yeah. Oh, they right. Through, which they abandoned in the yeah. second game. Always love the Fallout 3 lockpicking. That's not too bad. Yeah. yeah. Was it not too bad? No, it worked. I liked it. It was enjoyable. You know, there was a satisfying kind of clink. Fun. Yeah, the, the <laughs> clink Be careful. just like yeah. satisfying. I have opened this right? door. Yeah. I now have access to something. All right. And I feel like was Left 4 Dead 2 had the most satisfying dong with the frying pan, <laughs> but <laughs> Fallout 3 had the most satisfying dong. clink. Okay, the, thank uh, you for saying uh, L. Yeah, sorry. My bad. But you got me... Michael just handed me a file of... One dialogue situation mm-hmm. done numerous different ways. Two different and, ways. But, yeah. I think well, but that's the thing. Weren't you selecting things on the fly? Yeah. So it was technically infinite amount of yeah. ways. Uh, but it's who the dialogue is with. Mm-hmm. Do we know who, the, who does the lead character in Alpha Protocol? I don't know. I don't recognize his head. voice. And that's what I like about it. I have never heard this dude before. Yeah. And uh, But let's just say... Let's just... Spoiler. Spoiler. Is everybody ready? It's Nolan North. It's Nolan North yet again. Nolan North, not, you may... Not doing the main character, but Not the main character, character, but... Uh, doing the best character. Nolan North, you may remember as... Uh, Everybody. My name is Desmond Miles. Desmond I'm Miles. I'm a of war. From Assassin's Creed. Even if he ain't dead, he's lost in that soup. Our comms can't cut... Romeo from Halo ODST. We have to get out of here. The Prince from Prince of Persia. Well, not quite what you were expecting, huh? Well, and, not... And Nathan Drake in Uncharted. He is everywhere. He's everywhere. He's, he's everywhere. everyone. But he's also no fa- he's also fantastic. It's like I'm only pointing it out as like some dedication to what I do. Like I don't mind it yet. I worry yeah. about Nolan North being in everything. If Nolan North played every game he appeared in, he'd be a pretty hardcore gamer. That's yeah, true. <laughs> I wonder if he plays every game. <laughs> yeah. Remember we, we yeah. gave I was giving him a lot of credit and someone sent me something anonymously yeah. on Twitter because we make so much fun of game dialogue. And uh-huh. he said, like, you don't know how this works. And I'm sure we don't. I'm like, okay, yeah. and there's a bunch of DMs. How does this work? He's like, well, one, the average film has what? An, it's an hour and a half, right. and it's not all dialogue. The average game, someone records 10 hours of dialogue. And obviously you can't do that with someone in the room, mm-hmm. the, the person they're talking to. So that's why game dialogue always sounds stunted and weird and stupid. I don't think that's an excuse, because maybe if you got... I don't know. Oh, yeah, that explains why all my favorite cartoons also sound stunted and weird and uh, stupid because they're bit. recorded exactly the same way. Exactly. Yeah. They might then it's the same the same amount of money may, may be the outcome. Yeah. So spend a little time, have the people in the room do that. I just we, feel like game directors aren't necessarily boy, I don't know how how well their voice direction is. You need no, direction. But right? I've done I've done it before in this podcast. If I record one of you guys away from everybody else. You don't talk like you're talking to that person. The Christmas special is really weird because certain people yeah, weren't in the true. same room with one another. So you're not talking to each other. If I would have put a gap in between, it would have easily been a Square Enix game. Chris, <laughs> what's my motivation? What you, your motivation is, Tyler, you ready? Yes. It's Christmas. Uh, <laughs> it's Christmas. <gasps> and that's, it all, that's all we, Christmas. That's all we had to work on. 
<laughs> so I get it. I get it. I get it. I can feel but the snowflakes on my face. This is a weird example of of the different ways you can go through the game. As who's the main character? And what's his name? Mike Thornton. Mike Thornton. I can go through the game as Mike Thornton talking Mr. specifically. Agent Michael Thornton. Who? <laughs> Nolan North, number ninety three on Entertainment Weekly's. Yes. Ninety three best character. Hundred best characters. The, he shared the ninety three spot with uh, T C Carton's Cr- Carson's Kratos mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, Michael Hollick's Nico Bellic. Nico Bellic. Hello? In the back. With you in a sec, buddy. Not too uncomfortable, I hope. Now this, this is dry cleaning solution. Yeah, I just want to say mm. uh, right here, he's he's threatening a guy who's tied up in a chair yeah. with Sorry. tape over his mouth with a bottle of dry cleaning solution, obviously. obviously. Active ingredient is perchloroethylene. It stains out like a champ. Like a champ went, believe you me. Gonna be hard getting that stuff down his throat. Want me to get a funnel? A funnel? Yeah! That's a killer idea! And he I, likes me two more points. I like... <laughs> is that how it works? Yeah. It's like it's, the little thing flashes oh, on the screen wow. saying, you know, plus two with uh, Stephen Heck, this character, liked. Well, I like it because it's Nolan North in a very, much more sinister role than I'm mm-hmm. used to. He, he's his role in this is he's he's this completely crazy guy who may or may not be an actual secret agent or just like some weirdo working on his own. And this is him. This is you asked like responding differently. Active ingredient is perchloroethylene. Get stains out like a champ, like a champ went. Believe you me. I can come back. Oh no, no, please, just be a sec. <laughs> I can accommodate your torture. <laughs> please, please, please. And here's I just have another. Anywho, what can I do you for? I like your style. Do any of the people you've interrogated know anything about an attempt on Sung's life? You came to the right place, and you're lucky you did. See, people come in and out of Taipei all the time without asking for clearance, so then I have to erase them so they don't expose me. Now that sounds dangerous. (laughs) When you say expose, what do you mean? What do you mean? But then here's another dialogue choice. Anywho, what can I do you for? I'd like to know more about Ronald Sung. That is, if it won't cost me any important body parts. You came to the right place. You even had a different way of did. asking him. See, people come in and out of Taipei all the time without asking for clearance. Same response, so then I have though. to erase them so they don't expose me. Expose what exactly? Your overuse of quotation marks? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, he's a nasty do, he's one. doing air quotes this but whole he, time. But depending on what you asked him, he would reveal a little bit more information about who he was. A little bit. I have a little bit here. You're with the agency, am I right? That's not what I'm here to discuss. Do you know anything or not? Me? (laughs) Do I know something? That's a gas is what that is. You're wasting my time, Heck. Steven, relax. You came to the right place. Yeah, I work for a division of the CIA that doesn't officially exist. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Same question, same response, or a different response to the same question. You're with the agency, am I right? I'm with an agency, but U.S. tax dollars don't keep the lights Really? Up. SIS, Office of Secret Intelligence, Majestic 12, TVC 15, oh, wait, EPA. Something like that. Yeah, I work for a division of the CIA. <laughs> and then he goes back into his script of yeah. I like yeah. that he references the OSI there, too. The OSI? Yeah. Mm. And Office the e- of Secret Intelligence. And EPA. Yeah. EPA. So I... I I hate to relegate Alpha Protocol to another budget game. <sighs> I wouldn't say it's a do? budget game, but yeah, don't buy it till it's like twenty, thirty dollars. Twenty, thirty bucks. I mean, yeah, I get, like I said, I gave it a seven, which is not a bad score, mm-hmm. but it's it's just not anything special. It's you know, we were kind of sold on it's like this is going to be another Mass Effect, and mm-hmm. right. said it's like this is barely another Splinter Cell. Booyah! Mm. I didn't have a good sound effect ready. I'm sorry. I'm trying to load up. Were sound, but effects. I mean the story was yeah. sounded like it was strong enough. The, to... The story is really interesting, and I, I know that yeah. like you know Destructoid's Jim Sterling, I refer to him as such because he did a review of this for Destructoid. Ah, uh, okay. I uh, gave it like a, a two or a twenty, mm-hmm. uh, saying, you know, the, the story and the characters are all shit and completely uninteresting. It's like I disagree with him very strongly mm. there. I know. I saw a couple a couple other people. It's like you know, they're not fantastic, right? But, uh, right, it's, right. It's pretty interesting just to see how differently things can unfold. Jim Sterling, will you calm down? Di- no. <laughs> we Jim. love the Jim Sterling. We love the Sterling. Who we love the it? Sterling. Um, I did have. I did have. Who worked on? Who worked on? Bring. Was it Tom Coulter who did the worst sound effects? Tom, Tom Golter. Golter. Tom yes. Golter. Yes. Yeah. 
wonderful. I am a big fan of the worst sound effects. Oh, wait, before I get into that, um, I'm, a ba- I'm bad at this. Um, we were just wondering, and did, did Eric say, Eric Bratcher, our boss, say he used to represent Nolan North in some fashion? I believe so, yes. As, when he was an agent? Oh, oh yes, wow. yeah. He has stories about Nolan yeah, North. I don't know yeah. if he was an agent or he worked for an agent. He, he, I think he may have worked for an agent, and even partial responsibility representing the guy from Gremlins, the curly hair like mine right now, uh-huh. and Patrick Swayze's brother, who's the, 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 the Swayze who's still living, hmm. and <clears throat> and he also just told me no, <laughs> Nolan North, I'm like what the fuck was he on Port Port St Charles, and I couldn't, I could never find anything uh, Nolan North yes. was in. And finally, someone gave it to me. It's Port St. Charles, opera. an old soap opera from like 15 years ago, and yeah, I found this where bizarre. Start. Right at the beginning, this is what Nolan North is talking about in the soap opera Port St. Charles. Uh, hey, you ever see Raiders of the Lost Ark? This isn't the time for a movie trivia game. No, 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 no. Look, look. Remember Indiana Jones was after that little statue thing, and and, and it was on like a, a booby trap that was set to go off if the weight was removed. So he got uh, the sandbag and used it as a counterweight and switched them. Yeah, but if I recall. It didn't work. The big boulder came rolling down on top of him. Look, all we all we need to do is get something that that weighs enough that'll keep the booby trap in he place, would. so I can remove my well, leg. He is. This sounds he, like a video game to me. He is so born for this. Yeah, that is yeah. awesome. Wait, what you were expecting, huh? It <laughs> sure <laughs> was it. So sound dirty. clip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brett talking to, to the say. sound clips now. Go ahead, Tyler. You want to talk to Brett for a little bit? Sure. Yeah. Oh well. Oh wait. Oh, 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 oh but Hello. what's going on, buddy? Talk to him about Uncharted 2. I liked Uncharted 2. Fuck that game and its stupid Elston! face. Oh, come on, Brett. Brett. It's Tyler's turn to talk. <laughs> Tyler, go ahead. Say your piece. I like the. Hey, shut up! This is Brett. Brett. Oh, Brett. 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 What are Brett you gonna Box. do when you land back in San Francisco, Brett? That research me. Look on box back. Is that all I have? Jesus. Okay. <laughs> a robot <laughs> elephant shooting a ball at you. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, that's a complete non sequitur. I have no idea. You're how very frustrating. <laughs> imagery. He has it. Imagery. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, sorry. So going back to Tom. Tom Golter. He did a uh, what? Uh, worst. Most annoying sound effects. Sounds Most. like an interesting article. I believe it was. Most annoying sound effects in gaming history. <laughs> Who, whoever pointed, put it together is amazing. But we have what? These are good. These are good. The uh, the wizard dying off. I believe. He, I didn't. I didn't check it out. The theme of the hero who is about to die. Having to play with that. Right. Stop! That brought back memories. I Wizards get it! Warriors. Yeah, it's cool for like the first three seconds, and then it's like you realize it's just those three seconds over. Would you over. stop? <laughs> I know I'm in danger! <laughs> and then, uh, Gauntlet also had a similar death noise. Uh, this is like the sci fi thing they would play, and everybody would put their hands yeah. over the. Yeah. I was, yeah, I I was like kind of disappointed he didn't have the NES Gauntlet 2 sound effects, mm-hmm. which were even worse. Why didn't you tell me? My brain waves uh, have I changed. I wish I'd remembered. Why didn't you tell me? We can play it in the break. Why didn't you? <laughs> really annoy people just for four straight yeah. minutes. Hey, guys, come listen to a bunch of really <laughs> annoying sounds <laughs> on our podcast. Hey, we do this all the time. And, of course, most of this is based off of Zelda. Zelda, I, I think, was the first game I played when you were in serious trouble. It beeps to let you know, uh, and I, he just he had the sound effect from Link to the Past. Oh God, dude! And Carolyn, Charlie was just sending me Carolyn's response. Like, dude, were you <laughs> ever that in danger of dying in Zelda? <laughs> cut some fucking grass. <laughs> cut some, <laughs> cut some uh, grass. He's like, you have to use a potion. Like potion. And, uh, Carolyn, I believe, said, "Quote: Potions are for pussies." Yeah. <laughs> Throw some rocks. <laughs> Cut some grass. You shouldn't hear yeah. that for more than a couple minutes. Carol and Good Munson calling yeah, out Yeah, sometimes Tom you are in a dungeon and you're just trying mm-hmm. to. I don't know. In dungeons, I remember hearing that for you're minutes at a time yeah. for something, yeah. and you just you you know you're going to get a heart because you're going to hit a stupid uh, vase vase and get a heart <laughs> eventually. But you know you there's none available at the moment. Dude, when there's there's grass, all you have to do is scroll from screen to screen and recut grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for hearts. But and my then a soldier pops up. Damn it! How are you hiding in the grass? The one that I would have liked to hear, and I know at least two other people, if only Brett were here, the original Teenage oh. Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Uh-huh. When you were down on health. That was an annoying game. Yes, it was. When you were defusing the bombs underwater in that horrible, oh, that was horrible, horrible level. level. Yep. Oh, that fucking sound. Yep. Oh, my phone's ringing. <laughs> 
And uh, we he also had. Although I love that game because it had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in it. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it did have that in it. And I remember that now, was that's insane. Why I liked race. it. <laughs> It would, uh, Alpha I, Protocol had its story, and uh, that had. If turtles. only, if only Hank were here, so he'd get fucking mad for no reason because he's a he's a fucking baby. Yes, Hank, he's all <laughs> mad at me because I said he was wrong about the blue shell being in '64. All right, you were right. It's, <laughs> it was called the Spy <laughs> Show. Shut right. up, Hank. Shut up, Hank. Uh, <laughs> you sure are a big talker when Hank's not here. Yeah, exactly. Well, geez, I would never say that to his face. He's nuts. <laughs> but uh, this is definitely one of the most annoying sounds in uh, Super Mario World 2, uh-huh. Yoshi's Island, yes. when you get hit and baby Mario leaves your back. Yeah. It is the new baby laugh. Wow. What does Brett think about all this? <laughs> Fuck that game in its stupid face. Oh, no, Elston. Cool. Oh, that was, no, that right. was one of the greatest in games the face, in the Super Nintendo the era. Face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another one. Another one I liked is annoying sound. This is a good one because it wasn't just that it was annoying. It was what it meant. More of what it meant in the game because it was it was slightly helpful. Metroid Prime, when there were power ups around mm. you, they would make a noise, but mm. some items you wouldn't be able to get to for literally hours, mm. and you just hear it and think it was happening. That you'd think they were in a place you'd get to, but they're not. Right. Huh. They're beyond a couple barriers. But you should know that they're there. They are there. It's the completionist's dilemma. And I remember uh, making Michael laugh semi hysterically to this dumbass sound clip. Just probably one of the worst voice samplings, Altered Beast. Welcome to your doom. <laughs> everything from that power up. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I have no word. Word from the <laughs> Love to By love. the way, big shout outs to Tom Golter for working in a Golden Girls <laughs> reference Please. and a Where's the Beef reference. You think I'm not appreciating and, Tom And Golter. also for finding that uh, Alter Beast rap. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be hearing that on the end. The hip-hop. I feel like all, all of Altered rap. Beast is that game where you try to put as many marshmallows in your mouth as you can <laughs> and still say, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> and sing like Kurt Cobain. Oh, uh-huh, marshmallows. No. Uh, yes. The Moral Wind. Oh, got, got oh fucking again? Cliff Racer. Cliff yeah, Racer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck those things. Good God. Oh, oh, Lord. I feel like can't go anywhere. Yeah. I feel like this is going to be alarm settings on the my first Sony <laughs> alarm clock I had when I was, when I was eight. Sony, I remember that. Brand. <laughs> my first. Sony. I love pizza pie. I like macaroni. But what I love is my first Sony. Yeah. yeah. Is how and it had like it nice. had funny animal sounds as it your was alarm clock. Slightly racist. <laughs> A dog Congratulations! Barking. You're old yeah. enough to have to wake uh, up. God. Did anybody <laughs> actually play Morrowind besides me? I played it a I little, little bit. Little. But yeah. Like anytime you try to go anywhere in that mm, game, yeah. fucking cliff racers. And doesn't matter how far along you were. There's nothing to gain by killing them. Nope. There's nothing to gain by ignoring them. Nope. <sighs> they just gang up on you and are really irritating. <laughs> Gross. Uh, this I is hate a, them. superbly irritating. Uh, what is Pokemon the uh, Daw Raptor? Don't quote. Don't quote me on that. I. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear lord. Ah. Uh. Exactly. My ears. Yeah, eat that, bitches. <laughs> now I feel like some guy who was just at the party I was throwing just busted through my <laughs> door and tried to <laughs> me and my... Ah, good no. thing I had the security system. Oh, I was like my big Jim Slade. Oh, my <laughs> God. I, uh, oh, no. I love the way Tom describes uh, Pokemon Battle Cries as sounding like a broken fax machine or a tortured <laughs> fax <laughs> machine. It, do, it does sound like it's, a, it's a, like a problematic prodigy modem. <laughs> <laughs> the modem was having Mom, sex. I'm trying to be on the internet. I'm <laughs> trying to talk to Mom, the I'm on the bulletin board system. <laughs> oh, Mom, I'm on MSN. Yeah. <laughs> this is the last episode of uh. Deep Space Nine. Mom! <laughs> Oh, there's uh, the real. It's pretty annoying. That, and it's not just an annoying sound, but what it indicated <laughs> is that you're gonna have to again sit, stop doing what you're doing and sit, sit through, through some dialogue. Some dialogue. Probably about nuclear disarmament. Yes. Yeah. Probably a grand statement. I don't know why I made this, but I did. Snake, let me tell you about the history of the Cold really? War. <laughs> Great. Do you find love on the battlefield? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> I 
think so. Metal <laughs> Gear. Well, a lot of kind. You have to put yourself out there. <laughs> really start to network. Seriously, I just got home from school. Now I have to hear about the Cold War and Snake's thoughts on love. Godzilla was a metaphor for the Hiroshima bombing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's how you end bad impressions. With the <laughs> oh, and a Hiroshima joke. Otacon. And I don't, back around. I don't know why I made this, but I did. Uh, <laughs> there's no reason for that. So let's let's go to break with some Alter Beast. Uh, haunting, Alter haunting Beast. Yes. Alter Beast. <laughs> Welcome Remix, we get back. Oh, man. Game hey. deals. T-shirts. Oh, my stomach hurts. I must have eaten an altered feast for lunch. Oh! Hi, this is Ryan McCaffrey from the official Xbox magazine's KOXM Radio. You're listening to Talk Radar. Hi, this is uh, Travis Foster. And I'm AJ Sitch. And um, we're doing something kind of original, kind of new. Um, normally, everyone knows PC- PTFGN for the PC Engine podcast. Well, now we are starting a smaller... Kind of like a little bit more, uh, what would you say, AJ, like retro? Uh, no, it's, it's definitely retro. It's going to be a little bit of throwback. Uh, we, uh, we're we going to start up our own little podcast here, just the two of us, because we got a pretty good response as of right now, of, you know, after uh, guest starring on a, a PC Engine. So uh, our new podcast is called Pixel Heroes. It's a, it's a throwback for kind of going back into old school franchises, kind of what they're doing now but talking about the old games and what we loved about them and just you know just kind of shooting the shit yeah i mean it's just a natural conversation between two old men at least old by internet terms <laughs> uh, <laughs> so i mean um just come join us on retro thursdays and we'll make sure that you guys can get it on up uh, we'll we definitely get your yeah we don't have a catchphrase yet but uh you know, we'll get one eventually, but tune into Pixel Heroes, you'll enjoy it. Sony makes small products for small people. Walkie-talkies, Walkman stereos, and cassette recorders. Especially made for kids. I like Yoni. I like Tony. The word I love is my first Tony. It won't be your last. Hey! Yes? You look like a real asshole! Well, I am an extremely serious gamer. He's completely devoid of humor. So what you doing? Well, my level 80 guild and I were running off to complain about the journalistic credibility of Ars Technica's Naruto review on NeoGAF. Wrong, dick! You're listening to Talk Radio! Oh, I'm sorry! You thought you were funny! Well, guess the fuck what? Amend your fucking review, shit dick. I swear to fucking Christ, I'll well, I jump with that goddamn internet and kick you in the fucking throat. We ain't no fucking magazine, we got the F word! Fuck you, I thought it was funny. Fuck you! No, you two separate. <laughs> Let's fucking... We got hour long stories about shit teeth. Came out like a baby elephant. Didn't hurt a bit. <laughs> Talk right on with the house and Abe Lincoln's bonus bill! Call it the uh, Kid Fuckers Hoagie. Oh my god, wow. that sound must mean it's Talk Radder, uh, what, 
104? Sure. Talk Freight R104. Everybody's drunk and tired. Segment no one three. wants to do this. What? Segment three. I want to do this. Where am I? Your boy, Tyler Nagata. I yeah. admire your zest. Tyler wants to do it. I just went and peed by the train tracks as a train went by <laughs> watching all the people. It's okay. They only got one frame of your dick. Yeah. They, well, were, going, they were going that fast. Hey, you know what? That was enough. <laughs> that was enough. Could have it's laid your dick on the tracks for the dastardly achievement. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> Painful imagery. It was Painful. for charity. That's <laughs> where someone went to get my Mr. Show joke. After oh, derailing no. it with your penis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh. Um, <laughs> yeah. That rock band this week. Oh, my God. Spoon. Oh my God. A lot of the spoon. I turned my camera on, and P.O.D. is alive. I know we're all very excited. Uh-huh. P.O.D. <laughs> P.O.D. You are aware occasionally they bring the party. They're so relevant. They, they do. Good old Christian rock band. Yeah. You know what? Fuck this. We're going to go screaming into game deals this week. <gasps> Take uh-huh. my advice. Whoa. Do as I say. Uh-huh. Save a little money for a rainy day. What are you buying? What are you buying? Oh, man. This is too short this week. 3D Dot Game Heroes is $25 shipped with $10 future Damn. credit from GameStop. What? Yeah, I know. Is it used what? or new? No, I'm guessing new. Holy shit. New, um... Witness to the end of Guile and his... <laughs> okay. <laughs> and his okay. street about? fight. I, I guess they can feel good about paying full price for that and that yeah, at least I'm supporting Atlas. Yeah, seriously. It's a good. It's a great game if you're an old schooler. You'll, mm. There's no reason you won't love it. And uh, apparently also you can get... Uh, if you use the code NEW15 in the coupon box with GameStop, I don't know if that's... Compatible 3D Dot Game Heroes, you get 15% off any new 360 PS3 Wii game in stock until June 30th. The official Ubisoft store has Splinter Cell Conviction for $31 on 360. I don't see why you wouldn't. Exactly. Why wouldn't ah. you partake? Um, it, you have to use the coupon code 10 Thanks. That should I think gets you 10% off, and it also works for the PC version. So you have to thank them for the deal? <laughs> yes, that's, yes. that's cute. Oh, dear, you'll be soft. Uh, is thanks spelled house. out, or is it THX? Please. No, it's not THX. George <laughs> Lucas would have a fit. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks, 1138. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> well, I'm George Lucas, and I own the word droid. And... Uh, this is uh, this is barely interesting. Walmart has uh, two games for thirty dollars. A lot of awful Wii games qualify, but they have to be two Wii games. But a lot of three hundred and sixty games apply. And the best thing is for me is that they're not all platinum hits, so you can get weird, obscure shit that you like Jericho and Ninja Blade and Quantum of Solace and Sega Rally Revo. And yeah, they, Quantum of Solace is pretty obscure. Not it, well. It's not like a it's not like a million seller that they're dropping in price. It's a very it's. It's not a terrible game, but it's com- it's worth fifteen bucks. As I said, you just fucking winced. What did you <laughs> wince? That wasn't a wince. It was yes, a it smart. was. Look, the noise went off. That was totally. <laughs> <laughs> what my wincing sets yes! the noise off? No, <laughs> that was a smirk. All right, all right. That was a smirk. big difference. All right, and I'm gonna end game deals there because I don't feel good. Oh. oh. Oh my God. Yes. It's as if Brett bots become sentient and is controlling the soundboard against your will. Oh well, no. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter really, does it? it? Does no. does anything? Fuck that game! Oh, Jesus, yeah. I can't hear any more of that. Hey, it's shut up! This is Brett. Brett. Come on, that re- All right, buddy. Uh, go bowling. <laughs> go bowling. Bowling. Oh, I got him. <laughs> we had split reason shirts to get away. The winner has been notified for um. The Mega Man shirt we gave away last Yay. week. This week we have the Bioshock oh, shirt Bio to give away, shirt. and it's just a sh- it's a Bio shirt, <laughs> and it just says uh, it, it has a blue X button and a yellow Y button. It says Rescue Harvest. Ah, I think nice. it's one of the classier game shirts I've ever seen from SplitReason.com. The choice is on your shirt. The choice is on your Bring shirt. Uh, those should How be do right we above get... each of your teats. <laughs> right. Actually, I think it's right on the nipple. Oh, well, if somebody comes racy. along and starts hitting harvest, yeah. <laughs> it's like poking it. <laughs> then you got to harvest. You just have to. <laughs> you just have to. Well, oh, that's how you harvest. I'm out of <laughs> ideas. But uh, how do we give away this shirt? How do we give away a Bioshock shirt? Dude, I don't Practice. know. Practice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give Tyler Nagata one of these, and then I'll, 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 I will yield to a serious answer. Okay. Uh, Help me! I'm out of ideas. I don't know. What's your what was your biggest shock? Gaming shock. <laughs> gaming shock. Your biggest gaming bio <laughs> shock. Hold on, someone take that whiskey away from me. I want, I want Tyler to try again. Okay, um 
tell us about Ayn Rand. Don't do that either. <laughs> tell us that. Yeah, send us your best Ayn Rand fan fiction. Yeah. <laughs> It can be erotic. <laughs> yeah. God, having sex with Anne Rand would have been terrible. <laughs> I feel like she would have been criticized. Is it a guy? No. No. Oh, Anne Rand's a Ayn woman. Anne Rand was a total. Yeah, total woman. Yeah. Got total it. Woman. <laughs> Got it. I, total I'll, bitch. I'll leave my ignorance in, and I'll say, why don't you say your fl- your favorite plasmid? Fine. You can make one oh, up. Fine. Whatever. You can make one up. That's where the T-shirt. Sure. I was gonna say. <laughs> <"Tell> us, <laughs> what's your favorite bio? I. That's. <laughs> what's your favorite bio? <laughs> yeah. Mine is Ray with starring <laughs> Jamie Fox. Really? <laughs> I. I really enjoyed Jackie Chan's autobiography. It was very good. <laughs> Did you? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> is it written in English? <laughs> fine. Uh, Plasma. I. Ha- I do have a clip of uh, Jackie Chan's. Bio- autobiography on audio tape. I do. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. That, that, that was not Jackie Chan. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Jackie Chan teaches Will Smith's kid Kung Fu in, in Karate Kid. <laughs> That's what he does. <coughs> Fuck. Okay, jack off. All right. <laughs> no, I mean, it's jack it off. Jack it, jack it off. Not... Please jerk off Will Smith's son. <laughs> there was a comma in there. Please. Jackie Don't. Chan often yeah. uses his jacket as a weapon. <laughs> does, he does do he that. Does. He does. Up fist. He, That's his thing. He, he does. does. <laughs> he uses ladders, and, and, a oh broom man. and a mop. And, and you know what, guys? Well. Yeah. Yes. After he landed that punch, you know it hurt because he shakes his hand out. <laughs> That's oh, right. That's Am I right? right? Get straight out of town, Jackie yeah, Chan. Yeah. Get out of there town with so that so much silliness. we can learn from the East. Jack it on, jack it off. Oh, wait, no, cut. You should make a Jackie Chan game where every time your character dies and you continue, uh, he's brought out on a stretcher and gives a thumbs up. Yeah. To <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Half the game is just, like, interacting with ladders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. And now uh, you make Tomb Raiders. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, your favorite plasmid, fine. No, not your favorite pl- Okay. Well, what? you don't have any, any better ideas? I'll give you one last shot. Uh, no. I don't. Okay. <laughs> How would you harvest your little sister? Oh, that is good. <laughs> yeah. that, that is good, but it would yield to some censorable uh, results. You cannot harvest your little sister with a dildo. That is not cool. <laughs> what no. do you think happens when she is harvested? <laughs> <laughs> Where does that needle go? <laughs> this you segment has taken me to dark places. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yes. Um, Let's just all picture just go Lamar Burton to reading Rainbow, and we'll be back to, to some more community okay. stuff. Um, some more community stuff. I did want. Shit, I did Wait, not but how will they win their shirt? They'll go to gamesradio.com slash forums. Oh, okay, okay. And okay. they will they will find the contest. You will find a picture of the, of the shirt on the, on the Talk Radar page. For me, it's one of the, it's one of the most okay. wearable and public game shirts I've ever seen. Basically, actually browse gamesradar.com and you will see all It'll the stuff we It'll be up all weekend, about. you Good. fuckers. Just go okay. visit once. I just needed some closure on the whole shirt. Yeah, I know. I know you did. It's okay. It's okay, darling. Oh, God. So this is a wearable shirt. Would this shirt possibly appear in a Henry article about... It may it appear. Did. Well, Split Reason came out very favorably right. because they don't do a lot of designs with words. Right. Like, ah, right. yes, scoring for yeah. points. Right. Yeah. right. Power glove. And like, right. roots, yeah. man. It's about... Like, none you know, of that shit. Of words, it's shirts. not a snarky slogan. It's I love least it. obscure enough to be like harvest. I love that right. Split Reason has done this with us because they're, on, they're one of the few wearable games, in my opinion, right. wearable games guys, shirt companies. Guys, you know how blow me refers to like a blowjob? Jesus Christ. I could not believe Henry found <gasps> nine examples of a Nintendo card. All right. So like oh, entendres. Oh, man. I've never had blow a blowjob, but I bet it would be good. Split reason. Com. This shirt. They get my vote. Um, uh, we, had, we had some new users. Yeah, last week's question was, what's your favorite sequel? And I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. And then I just looked and like, Mega Man 2 and... Mario Galaxy 2 is awesome and like you know what almost every 2 game is awesome it's like that is that is the apex of the right, sequel right I don't feel like reading them all off and, uh, but uh, new users shit Sensational I forgot to mention him but I really like Gay for Gilbert which is just Henry's Henry's picture isn't gay everybody a little gay for Gilbert gay for Gilbert and I loved it because I just kept singing it the rest of the day to the tune of Bob the Builder <laughs> gay for Gilbert yes we all right, I was looking, like, that needed a sound clip. No, I don't have one. Oh. I was not prepared. Never mind. All I have is cr- Lazy Town. 
<laughs> going through your head all day and you weren't prepared? Um, not all day. <laughs> I was in the middle. I had to write a bad Rare article, too. Yeah. Um, that was a good article. That, it was that, not a good article. It was informative and... That, that reminds me that your friend last week mentioned to us that someone should make, based on Tyler Nagata's name... Oh, he wanted to save that. Oh. You can do it. Go ahead. I don't know when we'll do it. Oh. Well, well, it's, I can't sing. No. Well, it just so happens that Tyler Nagata's name fits, this is true. fits in very well to a certain song. If you like Tyler Nagata's Ooh. and getting caught in wait, the wait, rain... Wait, wait, wait. Can we do this properly? Let me find yeah, a karaoke version. Okay, okay. Let me try to carry over. Well, I, think I, I, I can't sing the song. I think you can. I think you can. I feel like we should change some of the other lyrics, though. Yeah. Because I don't know what Tyler Nagata has to do with getting caught. you got to improvise this. You're going to steal my buddy's idea. I don't even know where... Th- oh, I'm starting. Uh, what, what, what are the lyrics even hold kick on, in? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll start. you got to do the chorus. Okay, okay. I need a ride to work. We live next to one another. He drives a green ass car, and he considers you his brother. Ooh! So I lie here sleep. That's the real lyric. Shit. In bed. Scala. Got to stop reading the lyrics. It's too confusing. Tyler, you need to kick in with the chorus. If you, if you like, like Tyler and the Goddess <laughs> and playing PC games. <laughs> there you go. If you're not into yoga, that's the actual lyrics. <laughs> and you have to half a brain. That's the lyrics, half too. A brain. I do. If you like total making thing. love at... All right, all yeah. right. The first episode of Talk Radio. All I got was PC games. It's so like a total yeah. fail. But if you like Tyler Nagata. Uh, and, and like playing PC games. Yes. <laughs> can you just expand <laughs> on that, on those lyrics, Talk Radio listeners? Can you go into the forums yes. and, and write a full version of uh, Tyler, Nagata somebody here will with sing Tyler it. Nagata. Somebody we'll here sing will sing it if you write it. Um, That's so a Tidar promise. It is. That is a Tidar promise. A pinky promise. Let me see if I can go. Well, maybe we'll force Dan Emmerich to sing it because he loves oh, yeah. requests. And he loves singing a song he's already parodied. Yeah. No, but he loves it when we tell him what to do with his music. Quack, super ho- That's not good. Uh, all right. Um, a new question of the week this week. Yeah. It comes to us from Darktone. And he says, he asks, what video game had so much hype that it made you angry? That it made you angry. Either maybe some a game you were you were anticipating and it didn't lead up to the hype, or a game that was so hyped that you just stopped caring about. And I'll say one of, one of mine was uh, Too Human. Because there was yeah, literally on our site, like, Dennis Dyack is a big figure. Uh, oh, Silicon Knights, they're a decent developer. Like, a, a, a Eternal... Eternal Darkness. Is that their last game? Sure. Well, thank you. Like thank Silicon you. Knights? Yeah, yeah. No, Two Human was the last game. Well, other than that, before that. Yeah. Before that. And like that was like crazy. There was probably one in between. It was oh, crazy uh, Middle Year Solid Twin Snakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Barely counts. But but Two Human, we probably had an article on every month for five years. It was a big To the deal. point where, like, like, yeah, like Joe and Shane were, like, still rapidly excited about it and, and wanted to write about it. I'm like, there's not one thing you can tell me about this game that's going to make me want to play it more. And I wanted to play it already. Mm. It just, the coverage is just annoying me. Is, has there been a game that's been so overhyped? Yeah. I guess I was thinking about this, and now that I think about it, I think I would definitely say Spore. Spore. I was super, oh, super. That's a good, a good one. one. Yeah. When I first heard about the announcement, I was like, "Oh, right. Spore!" And then, like a couple years later, after hearing everything there is about it, and oh, Will Wright does a talk, and, and like he doesn't talk about the game; he talks about his philosophy oh, yeah, of game design. Right. Yeah, like, it, there's some. There, Will Wright has a power over people the same way that kindly yeah. professor that he really like, <laughs> but, like had a, a bit of a nerd crush he's, on. Yeah, he's college, basically yeah. talking <laughs> like Noam Chomsky, like and, right. and, and he's getting really deep into right. all the philosophy, of which games. was fascinating, right. absolutely fascinating. And then right. the game comes out, and you're like, oh, it's just kind of a game. Yeah, <laughs> 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 this didn't. I, I, I I'm not a better person now that I played with this toy. <laughs> like right. it's it's like Will Wright, you know, he's just he's he's an amazing designer, an amazing you know intellectual, but it's just a game, you know, and like it's been built up to be a religious he, experience. What he wanted to do with it was somehow nerfed by the Probably. capabilities the company he worked for was yeah. going to spend on. The I'm fact sure. that the universes you could create couldn't interact with one another really, yeah, I'm sure like, he wanted was to sort of more. weird. That was already a but like when the when the when the like creature creator came out and everything, it's like <laughs> penises, 
But and then I started to realize this is not a revolution. This is just a game, and we're just making penises. It's okay. I think, like most all Will Wright games, they're a technical triumph that will lead to how things are done for a long time. Yeah. No. And so I thought Spore would lead to brilliant more. ideas. I mean, as always, Will yeah. Wright has great, amazing ideas, and he is. Uh, you know, but still, he will be missed. I think he's good. moving on to do a pilot TV show with his robot again. I remember reading about that yeah, in the news yeah, like five years ago. Yeah, he's got like ago. a website. He's got like this whole little thing going on with the robots. And, yeah, he, and he's it's like uh, a hidden camera show where he just sends robots out. And somebody did it to me in the fucking 16th mission art station. No way, really. He, they're like, I just like, oh, what's that noise? Just this homeless guy, and it was a fucking robot, like an unattended <laughs> right. robot, Someone was yelling at with me. You? And I was, I, oh, I was like, I didn't even occur to me until just now that God. it may have been Will Wright filming his, his It's awful like the high tech equivalent of putting a dollar bill on the street and seeing if anyone <laughs> will take it. <laughs> oh, look at that! People are greedy! Uh, it's it's kind of like a shitty version of something <laughs> they had to design for Disney World. <laughs> you, what you should have done is stolen the robot. <laughs> yeah. Who would stop me? What if I had a better robot? Yeah, who would stop yeah. me? The robot police? <laughs> yes, there's no robot police. <laughs> no. Nobody wants to create Blade Runners just now. Yeah, We've all read exactly. the book. What is the just, movie? You leave and um, come back two hours like later. You leave and come back two hours later wearing a cardboard robot suit that you yes. made. I <laughs> talk to it as one of its own. <laughs> nah, I'm from the planet uh, Cyborian. Yeah. Cy <laughs> oh, man. Harrison Ford is going to stop you <laughs> Uh, and so he finds out he's one of me. I got <laughs> one of me. I got a PM on Games Raider. Of Games Raider. I just said that. I said that non-ironically. That's weird. Uh, someone sent me a message saying, "I just want to tell you, you look like Harrison Ford in Blade Runner." That's all. <laughs> wow, what a compliment! I know. Which I'm, picture? I'm like he didn't Harrison say. Ford looks cool in Blade Runner. I know, and I so I replied and <laughs> said, does. "Actually, no, I don't." But uh, I've been told I look like a young Mick Jagger and. Yes, I can see that. He didn't make it on his looks. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Anyway, Decker. thank you, whoever, whoever said I look Which like Which I want to get Logan on here one time from PC oh, Gamer. Oh, Logan Decker, yeah. To see how, how, the fuck, he, how did you get, like, half a name from Wolverine and Blade Runner? Like, your parents oh, I were, know! He has, parents like, were the not coolest that cool. name he has a, ever. He has a super cool name. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Anyway, I, I what wish was, he was my Sorry, what was the question? What video game had so much hype that it made you angry or disappointed you? I said Spore, you said something I wasn't listening to. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, anyway. You said Too Human. I said Too Human. I Okay, here's a game I remember being really, really angry about, but I don't know that it was necessarily overhyped. Mm -hmm. I remember I was 12. I remember I had read the Dark Horse uh, Aliens vs. Predator uh, comic no. book series. Uh, uh -oh. You know, where it was set on the it was set on it was yeah. set on some planet. and It was awesome. <laughs> it was such a cool comic. And was. I remember there was some Aliens vs. Predator like Super NES game coming out. Yeah. And I remember reading the previews about it in EGN. And I remember thinking, oh my god, it's Aliens vs. Predators. This is going to be so amazing. And then I remember finally when the game came out and it was time for that game to get a review, it kind of got stuck in the corner of a page with just a paragraph or two Whoops. about how it was very meh. And I remember it thinking to myself... It was a final myself, fight clone with lasers. I remember <laughs> thinking to myself, what happened to all those previews you wrote? Surely when you had, as, a, as games journalist type people... <laughs> We're doing, you know, like you could see that this was not going to be as cool, you know, you know. So I wrote them an angry letter. Whoa! And they they wrote actually, EGM a letter. Oh, we have the EGM yeah, letter. They actually posted. published it in the issue, and they, they really? wrote it back. Well, you don't, you can't really rate Young, a game until it's finally out. Young yeah, Tyler really. Nagata has a, a publisher letter. I know that you're a games journalologist. You know why that? I know. Is, right? I exactly know why. I will. I will post a, a link to that. Because yeah. it's because we're biased. No, I remember we're yeah. biased. Because <laughs> we're biased, and we want people to get excited about things and then right. tell them that things right. sucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's oh the no! I love that <laughs> picture. It's because we're misanthropic weirdos who hate fun. fun. Yeah, yeah, we, we hate, tried to we put together uh, that article for like morning EGM, like goodbye EGM, all our EGM memories. And Tyler's like, I wrote an article for them once. Like, can we? Can <laughs> I wrote them a letter. I wrote them a, le I wrote them a letter, <laughs> and they published it. And like, we ha can we find that? And he's like, I don't know. I'm like, well, no pressure, but I called my dad, try. and he happened to but try, and he, he happened it. to have the fucking yeah. magazine, and yeah. we got the picture. Yeah. And it's in the article, Tyler's first fucking game. My dad scanned that. <laughs> he scanned it completely That's black and white, awesome. like a Famitsu. Reader. I did not. I did not. <laughs> I did not know. I I love that story about your dad finding that letter, and we put it up on the website like an hour later. 
but I did not know it was over Aliens vs. Predator <laughs> on <the> Super <laughs> Nintendo. I remember how angry yeah. it was. Yeah. I think I wrote some letters to PC Gamer. They never got published. Now in this office. I just love that it says Tyler Nagata. It's his awesome. first yeah, and last yeah. name. Like, I'm, I'm uncomfortable saying someone's last yeah. name. Wow. Well, Nagata. Michael Ropardis. What? What do you got? <laughs> Game that was hyped. We're in question of the week, sweetie. Dark Tone, the person who suggested this this question was talking about Gran Turismo, and he said he'd never seen the word graphics used so much <laughs> than in conversations about Gran Turismo. That game Turismo. had a lot of graphics. It's so though. odd you when graphics admit. works its way back into the I, I, I guess of. Soldier of Fortune on some level. That, uh, you know, yeah. I, I got really excited about that before it came out. Like, Ring's like, oh, this dismemberment sounds so cool. Well, you, you were a big fan of the magazine, too. I was. Were you real? Oh, no. <laughs> Damn, it. Damn it, I ruined my you'll, own job. You'll have to forgive me, I'm a little bit drunk. <laughs> that, was, that, was real, that was really straight, though. Yeah. Uh, no, not, not Soldier of Fortune. Oh. But yeah, the, the game, uh, like, I'd been hearing all this stuff about how cool it was, and, you know, then I, I actually got my hands on the Dreamcast version, and it was like, this is, it's fun, mm-hmm. but it's the dumbest right wing yes. game I've ever played. <laughs> oh. You go into Baghdad, it looks like a set out of like a 1920s mummy movie with like <laughs> dirt floors everywhere and Dirk the streets Dirk-a. are just like sand. Yeah, exactly. Muhammad Jihad. And, and then there's like some guy walking towards you with like a big shield that, you know, stops all your rocket blasts and shit. And, but like, you know, the... But then the, uh, you know, all the, the hype leading up to it was like, oh, man, look at all this. Like, you can shoot a dude in the shoulder and his arm will fall off. It's so cool. Yeah. Know, right? well, staring As at it me. turns out, I'm not <laughs> you're talking, sweetie. <laughs> but dis- I, remember, I remember that, I'm too. more comfortable when everyone's ignoring what I have to say <laughs> and just waiting for their own turn. I remember. <laughs> Don't reveal the formula. <laughs> <laughs> Don't reveal the formula. No, re- <laughs> Isn't that always the formula? There's magic here, mm. and that's... No other side can create mm-hmm. that. Which, if we leave it at this, then we're sort of out of content, and we've come up short. Hmm. Yeah. And the only thing, only compliment I saw last week about a podcast, oh my god, it's almost three hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they just want to bathe in us. No, no, no. <laughs> I know how it is, because like I love podcasts, and like most podcasts are 45 minutes long, and it sucks. I'm not, I'm not done with what I'm doing. While I'm listening yeah. to my cast, I'm doing laundry, I'm walking oh to the grocery God. store. Then you have to switch to music. And yes. It's just unprofessional. Ours is longer. And uh, Also, Bubsy. Bubsy? Bubsy fucking suck. I, I agree. Did Bubsy not live up to your expectations? No. But, I mean, you know, you got a cover on EGM. You know, what could possibly go wrong? I remember that cover. Yes. I, I, I'm in the, the same article yeah. you're in, holding yeah. my Bubsy article, <laughs> which I have. <laughs> Oh, I drew that yeah. so... I you know what? Everywhere. And, like, Asteroids got so much hype. It was going to be this game <laughs> where you're shooting all these... I thought it would oh be man. great. Pong was... Oh, it was man. just hype lines. Thing. I just I just didn't... I, I don't you remember know. when... I was so disappointed. You remember when, like, when fucking uh, Missile Command was on the cover of oh, The Economist? Man. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> a man, oh, I know, man. I, I, I thought huge. that really happened, man. <laughs> that was supposed to stop it. Oh, man. It's because you got me that one time with Soldier... <laughs> God damn it, I wanted to riff on Soldier of Fortune magazine. So riff on Soldier of Fortune. I don't know anything about it. I thought you would. Dude, it's a magazine written for and by mercenaries. What do you want? <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's for dudes with mustaches and guns. <laughs> Excuse Work me. Work with that. And, and, co- and, and giant cock obscure, obscuring guts. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's it's a picture of you with a mustache and a gun. So I... Mm. There's a lot of pictures of that. I'm pretty well, sure. Well, I have a beard to accompany the mustache. <laughs> okay. That actually isn't a mustache or a beard. It is the Alpha Alpha Little Rascals blowback from the gun itself. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I uh, captioned that one, me screaming in the desert. Also, there is yeah. a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I, something oh, man, comes you over Michael when he water. holds a weapon. It's, it's yes. a gorgeous thing. It's, it's, it's the God. urge to just open my mouth as wide as possible and pantomime <laughs> screaming. Okay, see, that was too much magic. <laughs> that was How too much magic. Not? Do we have stuff going up next week that we can think of right uh, now, or are we working too hard? No, I mean, I can tell you about... I have something going up the day this podcast goes up that's just a, a big article all about the games that are coming out this summer. It's mm-hmm. really just something to no, kind of... Yeah, it's something to kind of aggregate... Your summer, like 
you that way you can look at everything that's going to come out mm-hmm. in one place. Where you want to put your money. Yeah, we see it all together and think about where you want to put stuff. And uh, Jesus, dude, dude, that was a massive part. <laughs> was it? <laughs> Chris has I, a chatty. Was it picked up on Mike because it's certainly picking up like, on Olfactory. That was like what, three, four <laughs> wow. consecutive yeah. farts. Uh, yeah. If you if you have your, it was It's just dude. I'm too afraid to it leave. It was my like a poo poo platter. <laughs> I'm if, you your, uh, <laughs> if you have your, if you have your. Apple um, smell a vision turned on, hunt. you'll you'll be able to I'm sense too afraid that. to leave my asshole open that long. I couldn't <laughs> let it go in one consecutive <laughs> fart. Otherwise oh, I could man. have hit the solid channel. Yeah, you gotta cl- you gotta you gotta, you gotta clench it up. Your asshole is like yeah. saloon door. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like swinging in and like out. Clint Eastwood villain just kick them in. <laughs> Speaking of your asshole, how about Red Dead? Red Dead I haven't played it yet. Uh, I would like to play it. It's but cool. Rockstar doesn't like me anymore. Aww. And they haven't sent me Aww. a copy. Oh, I'd say it's because you didn't do any coverage, but Charlie did. I coverage. actually did do coverage, but not under my name. So now I don't. Get that <laughs> fucking copy. Oh. G. Oh. Wellington Duck, was that you? <laughs> yes. Anyway. Yes. Oh, I, I was the. I all the preview coverage for Red Dead under Alan Smithy was me. <laughs> it was all me. But uh, next week, wh- who, who's got something next week? Next week. Well, next week, Monday, everyone oh, look shit. forward to a- another episode of Pokemon Monday. <laughs> Believe it or not, you can look forward to them on Mondays. Michael! Yeah. Every Monday. He never Sorry. burps. Yeah. Starring the host with the most Pokemon in her PC box, Carolyn yeah. Goodmanson. Carolyn, who won't say more yeah, than not- eight words on Talk Radar, oh, has her own I, podcast I asked her. I asked her, and I wasn't sure if I should resent her for that, because I... <laughs> like, like I love her, and Carolyn is a friend of mine. And right. I'm like, will you please come on the show? She's like, I'm not comfortable. I don't want to do that. And then she did say, like, in episode 100, when she got on the mic, and she's like, she just said stuff. I'm like, oh, no, I can do this. And yeah. then, boom, yeah. instead of coming on here, she created her own <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Boom, which hey, is hey, usurping mine. <laughs> 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 and, no, hey, it's hey, not well. fair. That's how she works. It you know? is not fair. <laughs> she finds out she's comfortable with whatever. Something. She's way more efficient. <laughs> she's not going to help you. I can't compete on, on a <laughs> hey. Carolyn Goodman's and Pokemon Monday level. That's oh, bullshit. Man. <laughs> once once that. she finds We're out she's comfortable now. with making websites, CarolynGoodmanson.com is going to overtake yeah. Games Radar by millions. Fuck that. She's too. I I hate her right now. Carolyn Goodmanson is about to take over the world. Yeah, oh. she seriously one is. One trainer at a time. Oh I my know. god. Her her and Tetra, her cat. She's going to be a star. She's going to be a big, big, big star. She will be. Pokemon. It's always the reluctant people who become the she stars. She is. Right? I, I, I swear we to God. We put ourselves out there. We get drunk. We act silly for mm-hmm. your amusement. But it's the people who, who quietly uh, quietly observe who will eventually she, become she the knows. stars. She knows. she knows that. She knows everything that's wrong with everything. Mm-hmm. It sucks. It's such it's such a different atmosphere sitting is in, it? in the Pokemon Monday yeah. recording, recording room. Is it better? I, I'm not going to say if it's not, it's not, not. It's not better. Hey, it's, hey. just, it's just different. It's just different because it's us sitting, right, right, sitting right. around and we're not all drinking booze or anything. We have <laughs> yeah. we have our sheets right. of paper with our nice, neat outlines yeah. over what. No, we're when I talk, talk to my girlfriend <laughs> and I, I talk about my ex-girlfriend, I don't say it was better or worse. It was just different. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it's right. Yeah. So what you're saying it's is it was better. Be- ah, <laughs> that's not what I say. <laughs> <laughs> I say I was scraping stuff off the ceiling. <laughs> Before I met you. Oh, right. She doesn't appreciate that. <laughs> so then I took her to see Sex and the City, too. And, and everything, she was fine. Everything Did was you fine. Did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy Sex, Sex and the City? I can't talk about it as much as I want to. I, I know you want to talk about the it. The movie is fucking terrible. We talked about it in the elevator. The movie is fucking terrible, but it's awesome on like so many le- yeah. It's slightly racist. I kind of want to see it. See, see it with the... Like, that's, I read so many bad reviews about Sex and the City, too. It was sort of like it was one of those movies that like whoa this movie looks really yeah bad. I read one, yeah. one like I can't wait to see it but my girlfriend is a Sex and the City fan I could take her tomorrow and be like oh this is a romantic gesture right nope I just want to see one of the worst movies of the year <laughs> here's the thing I, c- confession time I'm a little bit of a Sex and the City fan me too I fucking hate the movies I w- <laughs> the movies take out everything that is interesting about the show uh-huh. and they replace it with this girly bullshit <laughs> that was the worst part of the show and they think they, the producer think well this is what worked and they're mostly right because that's what the audience wants the gay audience. The, the gay audience. They are the writing to audience. a gay audience. Eh. I was talking to my gay friend about that, and I was watching, like, about the time in Sex and the City 2, where Liza Minnelli came out and did all the single ladies. Mm-hmm. Liza Minnelli. I'm like, I'm not, I'm okay with gay people. 
why the terrible taste in everything? <laughs> why, <laughs> why Liza Minnelli? Why, why Liza, Liza Minnelli? Minnelli? Like, I would, I, you I, know, I'm, I'm prepared to accept that there are things in this world that are simply not for me. Yes. But Liza fucking Minnelli. Yeah, no, I said, I, like, I would rather fuck a man than <laughs> listen to a Liza Minnelli album. <laughs> it is that fucking terrible to me. It is, it is god awful. Judy Garland? Like, why would you listen to that shit? And, like, this person said to me, it would, it, you have to understand about being in the closet. It's something about a flamboyant desperation to be accepted, which is what all those musicals and that camp nonsense embody. Mm-hmm. It's really, oh. it is really it, interesting to analyze. Yeah. I could, I couldn't get over it because everything, everything about that movie I pretty much hated, except for the way it depicted men, which was fucking honest. Honest? It's a little honest. Not yeah. non Arabic men. I, I Jesus, I they got okay. I haven't well, seen the movie, so I can't judge it. I've just seen the first one, and I thought it sucked. Yeah, we, I, I was actually in a hotel room in Santa Cruz. Sex in the City, the first movie, happened to be on, so we're like, let's watch it. Then we'll go see the second one, no yeah. one remembering what had happened. This will be fun. And the whole time we sat there going, men are pigs, yeah. men are jerks, but not in an ironic way. I was like. I felt I feel the exact same way as Big, but it, yeah, he's the, a dick. He's, but he's that's Mr. exactly Big. correct. You landed him. You caught that fish. What does he want to do when he gets home? He wants to chill out on the couch and read a paper. And you hate him. And you it. hate him for it. Exactly. And so he's like, "Well, let's get a separate apartment, two nights a week, and we'll make that'll make every moment we have special." So, like right now, I don't see my girlfriend every day. All right. When and when when I do, I make it a special occurrence, Michael. You have a wife. I do. Every day, do you wake up and be like, oh, "I got your tickets to something"? Woo! <laughs> like, like I do that because I don't see her every day because I want to surprise her and it put a distance in between. It, it feels weird. I thought that was a great solution <laughs> if you can afford it. Which now, you I'll can. say, my wife is a Sex in the City fan. She feels the exact same way about the movies that I do. Oh, the yeah. movies are that movie was movie fucking. Bad. T- it's two and a half hours long. Wow. You're gonna see it. You're gonna see it. No, I'm not. Where are they going? going to Mordor? Uh, only yes. A- <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my. So, no. <laughs> they've taken the Hobbit size and It turns oh. out they're taking a first class flight to Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Oh, I see. Yeah. Two oh. and a half hours. Oh, oh. Which only makes me mad because, like, look, it's... I, I sat through 10,000 BC and that <laughs> was long. I know it's not... I know that movie's not for me. Oh, man. But you clearly didn't want to end the series. Sarah Jessica yeah. Parker could totally be Gollum. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. And I'm not a shallow dude. All those women were very desirable in their own ways. They are old and unfuckable hags in this movie. Hey. Seeing them on the big screen. I don't know. And, like, it's she's just... staring in a mirror, and I can't get beyond their mustaches. It... <laughs> those, those movies, just oh. to me, I watch them, and they feel like they are geared toward the kind of women who, when confronted with someone else's engagement ring, they automatically go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I, I do want to take a picture of this. It's a solid blue line. The first time uh, <laughs> Tyler can see it. It'll never work. It'll never, you'll never get it. But the same, the same, do it again? The same <laughs> giddy feeling. No, 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 I'll get it. I'll get it. The same giddy feeling we get when, and I could be alone on this, but when we watch Entourage, it is a disgusting male fantasy. You know what I'm going to do tonight? I'm going to drive around some race cars and bang models because my friend's famous. Yep. Like that. Yeah. I watch that for the can't same reason. Women. I, I can't either, but I <laughs> but I still watch it because it does tap into that that root of me. Hmm. And I don't judge people for watching Sex in the City. So I get that. They're, they're great characters. Yeah, I've watched yeah. the whole series. I mean, I didn't hate it. I, that's what I, lo- I love the admission of. Like, I had a girlfriend, no cable. Yeah. I watched that whole series. I down. I, got, I know who these people are. Yeah, I knew who their boyfriends. Are. I can name them. I all know by who name. Samantha is. Oh, exactly. All right. Exactly. I can't believe we talked this long about Sex and the City. We're probably yeah. pissing God. people off. All right. Uh, so all we're right. gonna close. Well, they want cards. people want longer podcasts. Yeah, and this, this is what you get. <laughs> when we is struggle what you for get, information. <laughs> <laughs> get a podcast. Please. We're gonna talk about Sex and the City. Man. We're gonna we're talk about Sex and the City. We're gonna talk about Sex. How about this? Give us a preview for Pokemon uh, Monday. You don't I, have one, do I, you? Hello, spoilers. <laughs> just a preview, a snippet. Uh, just a preview. Okay, oh, I'm, sure, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Carolyn Goodmanson will have really <laughs> cool things to talk about. With well, of course she will. <laughs> Does she not always? We might. We might. I really have nothing to say. I don't. I don't know. I, I let her do all. all right, it's all right. her. It's well, her gig. If you guys want to talk about Sex in the City, go ahead. <laughs> 
I, I don't. Mean, if you want. I, I don't. Mean, we, we could always turn the conversation back to cats. But it's we <laughs> were talking about Bubsy earlier, and which made me think about Heathcliff. Oh, no one which should. Made me think no of, one should terrify the Which neighbor. made me think about those other cats in really? the Heathcliff, Heathcliff show. Heathcliff makes me think about Heathcliff. Oh, oh the Cadillac, Cadillac cats. cats. Oh. They were so much cooler. Oh, than you're, right. you're right. They yeah. were almost interesting. Yeah. 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 This close. Where's their live action adaptation? Oh, I know. Hello. And then somebody <laughs> sent me something this week that it was just Marmaduke Lombardi. <laughs> <laughs> Bomber Duke from Can I ask you a question? Please. Why the fuck is that dog talking in that movie? He never talked in the cartoon. In, in the you know, he, you're right. He never even had a word. He never had a thought bubble. No. It was normal. It was a one-panel cartoon. Bomber Duke does not talk. He just he leans out of car windows. Yeah. I'm like yes, officer. He's not my lover. Like that. <laughs> that was a boom. Bomber Duke cartoon. <laughs> God, I hate Marmaduke. We are free form today. Does uh, anybody have a, have a song they want to? Marmaduke sounds like a candy, a type of candy. Marmaduke actually sounds like like a college <laughs> prank. <laughs> <laughs> the Marmaduke, dude, you've been Marmaduke. Do you remember the alphas? It's like the rusty oh, mailbox. Man. <laughs> rusty mailbox. <laughs> and then these these I'm sober. That's also a and prank. in the same conversation about camp gay shit. Uh, <laughs> what? What? Oh. About Sex in the City, or oh, right. he's like, he's yeah. like Liza Minnelli. Think about like, can't be. Can't. <laughs> Why would you listen oh, to Liza Minnelli? I don't understand no. it. I don't. I don't get it. True Blood, that show is fucking terrible. I don't know what you gay guys see in it. I he told. He said. He said. So you were doing it college style. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about college style? It's like, well, that's when you uh, put it between a dude's thighs because you're too afraid to go in the end. So I would like to call this podcast no. what Talk Radar 104 College Style. <laughs> oh. College Style. Oh. Now I know. But it's sort of like when... Well, no, there's no sort of like... Hey, uh, Professor! Hey, Professor. <laughs> it's like sort of like when you do... No, this is unique. It Holy is, it is totally unique. Because I love those Christian women. It's like, well, God is watching if I do it in my vagina. <laughs> <laughs> but then if you put it in my butthole... Right. Can, can I end this thing as, as, as a very sober newscaster? Can we, can we think of a good Who ending is song? absolutely not sober right now? I liked Leggy Gaga do the Mario. Oh yeah, <laughs> but that Just requires do the video. You element. need that video. <laughs> oh, that that does require it. Yeah. You know, Guile's theme does go with everything. Well, Guile's theme, yeah. like Tyler says, goes with everything. We will explore that next week. Until then, we're going to close up the show with a Tyler Wild. Today in the news, sixteen teenagers became pregnant after being Marmaduke, which is a. Go. <laughs> 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 Doc Rayner's over. Oh well. <laughs> 